Good evening. Good evening, uh, Deliverance Heights. Welcome to Phoenix, YouTubers. Welcome to another interesting evening. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen here. Hey, that's what church is supposed to be like. Did you know that? You're not supposed to be able to predict what happens at church. It's supposed to be like this. You never know what's going to happen. You don't know who's going to show up. You don't know what's going to go on. That's the best way to do it. All right, let's get going now. It's already that time again. Uh, the seminar is next week. Next week, right? Yes. Seminar is next week, part two of how to minister and diagnose mentally ill Christians. They're all over the place. In case you weren't aware of that. It's working. All right. See, when you got the touch, you handle this stuff. All right. <laughs> Don't forget about our radio programs. We're on every morning and afternoon here in the valley, Monday through Friday. And we're also on, on in the West Valley in the mornings and in the middle of the night looking for insomniacs. All the radio programs are always on soundcloud.com slash hardcore-christianity, 24 hours a day, as you know. Uh, good search. If you switch over from Google to Good Search and put in our charity name, Hardcore Christianity, if you can figure it out, uh, they will donate to us every time you surf the web. Good Search isn't as quite as good as Google, but uh, thanks for helping us. Uh, our Thursday night services are booming. Was anybody here for Thursday? Wow, there's another booming service. Holy Ghost moving hardcore Thursday nights. It was fantastic. Uh, those are always broadcast on live stream. Our Friday night services, this one, is always broadcast on our YouTube channel right there. We have four YouTube channels. The first one is for people who want to get into the deliverance and healing ministry. You go through the sessions. And get prayed up and you're ready to go. Tonight's is on tonight's teaching will be on our YouTube channel number two, House of Healing AZ. If you uh, know somebody that needs deliverance and they're too afraid to come, uh, as I said before, send me an email, Mike at hardcorechristianity.com. Or if you have any complaints, and there's there's so few of those. If you have any complaints or recommendations or suggestions, you send me an email. I answer all my emails, even if there's FUs in them. It's all good. I don't take that stuff personal. You can't be in this business to take stuff personal. You won't last two weeks. Okay? You got to let everything go, including the raving compliments, which I get them often. You just let those go. I'll send you the list for the mentally ill or for the typical American carnal, lukewarm Christian, number two. All right, YouTubers, don't forget about your terror cells. You're supposed to be opening those up in your local church. And you should have been to that service in Prescott last week. It was incredible. They've got kundalini spirits running amok up there. And the deliverance service was like off the hook. Powerful. It was truly amazing. God send us grace. Speaking of grace... The healing house is done. Yeah? We need your help. We need food donations. We need stuff for the kitchen. We need stuff for the beds, the usual stuff. Uh, if I was a woman, I could go through that a little better. I don't really know what goes in a house, but whatever goes in a you know, regular home, <laughs> that's what we need. Just bring your donations and put them in the kitchen if you would. Stuff your not using it anymore we would appreciate it we're getting ready we, we haven't started taking people yet we're not quite there yet but the building's done and it looks like a thousand times better than it was before the donation boxes are on the 
doors as you leave and if you don't put anything in then the doors have an automatic locking system <laughs> <laughs> We've been spending money around here like crazy All right history That's a great thing isn't it? <clears throat> Before I get started my best girl is visiting tonight Tracy my girl is right sitting right there she led me to the Lord. She, my girl. Welcome, honey. Uh, histories are interesting. They're very important. History is very important because you can learn from history if you've got half a brain. If you don't have half a brain, you repeat the stupid things of history. And it's your job as a born again Christian to leave a history. You're supposed to leave one. Let's check a couple of them out here. Let's take a quick jaunt through your family tree. What family tree? If you're a born again Christian, you are not supposed to be in your old family. That's just your earthly family. That's secondary. You're actually now in the kingdom of God and you are a child of God. You have a mom and dad now, but they're secondary. You have a heavenly father who replaced them. If you're a born-again Christian, you are all equal in the eyes of God. God loves every born-again Christian exactly the same. No born-again Christian is loved more than the other one. Father loves a backslidden Christian as much as he loves Billy Graham. All right, we got dozens of backsliders here tonight. We'll work on that. We'll hit that in about an hour. <clears throat> now, you are not supposed to be in your regular family anymore. That's a temporary residence. You do not belong here. You do not reside here. That is not your identity anymore. You are now a born again child of God. You have a different family and a different future. So I'm going to go over your family tree today. Okay, <laughs> I found it interesting. Uh, you may not. Now, in 4 BC, what happened then? Jesus and John were born, and King Herod died. What the heck does that mean? Uh, the Romans never had zeros in their calendars. There wasn't a zero. So uh, they found out that King Herod died in 4 BCE. Yeah? Jews use BCE. Why? Uh, they don't. They don't believe in Jesus. Okay, so that's before the common era. But we use BC. Yes, because we are. We're, we're Christians. That's right. We're not Jews. We're Christians, right? We have been grafted in Romans into the family of God. So we use BC. So these dates are not exactly right. Jesus. Couldn't have been born technically 4 BC. But this is how they worked it out. So everybody goes with it. It is what it is. I don't care. 7 AD, Jesus is in the temple when he was 12. Yes. And then uh, 27, 28 AD, John, Jesus and John entered their ministries. And 30 AD, approximately. Again, these are all, nobody was there, but it's approximate. Jesus was crucified. 38 AD, uh, Stephen was stoned to death, the first major martyr, and Paul was converted a year later. 49 AD, they had the Council of Jer Jerusalem, and that was the big one. There was a big dispute over Judaism and Christianity, how they mingled together. How much of this or do we keep in that? And they had a big dispute over it. Same dispute goes on today. They had a big meeting and they said, this one's out. That's in. End of the story. So they gave them four, little, four rules. That was it. No more Judaism. No more keeping of laws. You don't have to keep any feasts. You don't have to ring any bells. You don't have to blow any horns. You don't have to wear a certain outfit anymore. We got a lot of Jews here tonight. This isn't going to go well. 
the new covenant then replaced the old covenant. And so they told the Gentiles that they didn't have to keep any Jewish laws. That was a big event. That was a big event. And that was in 49 AD. Nero rises to power in 54 AD and initiates huge persecution of Christians. Feeding them the lions and all kinds of stuff. Nero was uh, severely mentally ill, severely psychotic, severely paranoid. He was like in orbit. <clears throat> That's a technical term. 63 AD, what happened then? The Jews couldn't take it anymore. They said, we are out of here. We're sick of Romans. Sick of it. Sick of being slaves. We're going to revolt, and we can beat them. Oops. 64 AD, Nero does what? Well, he pops a gasket, and he burns down <laughs> half of Rome, and then he blames it on the Christians. Yeah, have you ever been blamed for something you didn't do? Happens all the time. Just like Jesus. In 67 AD, the Roman general Titus starts his march. Josephus tries to talk the Jews out of it. Let's don't defect. We can't win. They say, we're not going to listen to you. Josephus then jumps ship. He jumps into the Romans. He get, ends up in Rome, safe and sound, living a luxurious existence. And thank God he did, because we have what? The writings of Josephus. Those things are fascinating. You have get a copy. Those are great reads, and some of the, our Christian... Uh, people in the Bible are in some of his writings. It's really interesting. The Jewish wars are fa fascinating. All that stuff's really great. Re I recommend it. It's not divinely inspired by any stretch, but it is wor it, it is a good read. It's a worthy read. Very interesting material. And then in 68 AD, the Essenes are wiped out. Some people some people believe John the Baptist was raised with them. No, 70 AD. Yeah, Jerusalem burns to the ground. Titus finally wipes them out, and he cuts all the trees down in Jerusalem, and then he spreads salt everywhere to ruin the ground and wreck the chance for them to rebuild or regrow anything. It takes years and years to rehabilitate the land because of their revolt. And then, 73 AD, Masada falls. Took them three years to get up that mountain and into that fortress. When they got in there, what'd they find? Dead bodies from mass suicide. And the end, that end of the Jewish era crashed. Jesus predicted all that would happen. Matthew 23, 24, 25, Luke 21. He said it was all coming. He predicted it decades before it happened. It all happened exactly like he said. And then in 81 AD, another Roman Caesar starts viciously persecuting Christians. This goes on for decades. In 96 AD, your brother, the Apostle John, is on the Isle of Patmos, and he writes the book of Revelation before he dies in 132 AD the Jews can't take it anymore again and they do what replay history replaying itself Josephus was long since dead so he couldn't abandon ship the Romans wipe them out again the Jews are slaughtered again Jerusalem is smashed again awful the persecution of Christian goes on for decades and decades and decades, but in 312 AD, what happens? Constantine, the emperor, is converted to Christianity. And he has an edict of Milan where Christians are no longer to be persecuted. And Christianity starts to Boom. 
Roman in 325 AD the Council of Nicaea They sort through all the books Okay, they got together with all the Bible scholars if you're bored right now I'm gonna to get to the other interesting part later. I'm just setting something up here Please don't turn on me here going through a little boredom stuff then we're gonna kill it <laughs> Over the years there were hundreds of religious books written in the same way outer society has uh, thousands of different kinds of magazines and some of the magazines are considered more credible than others uh, if you uh, Some newspapers in the United States are considered credible Newsworthy publications, okay other other publications like the globe are considered uh, I don't know, Are there really Martians Do they like cheese? I mean it's a debatable subject, okay? In the fourth century the exact same thing happened you had these writings That were considered divinely inspired and then you had all these writings here that were considered Not inspired so here you would have the credible newspapers and then here you would have the star the globe and stuff like that so they got together with all the Bible scholars at a big event and they said well this one's out and that one's in and they put together our Bible they kept the other documents but they put them in other categories for example one of them is the Apocrypha right and during the Protestant Reformation, we'll get to that in a minute, the Apocrypha was tossed out the door. The other was kept. And that's what our Bible looks like. It's about that big if you get the big print one, you know, for the eyes. And some of them are about that big if your eyes are normal. This part was left out. And then in 1054 AD a bunch of people say hey this Roman Catholicism stuff is a bunch of crap you got to be kidding we're out the door and what happens the Orthodox Church rises to power <coughs> so there's a split between Catholicism and Orthodoxy A lot of times I'll throw in sound effects to make this teaching more dramatic. <laughs> so now we've got two giant religious monsters. Rawr. They've got their truths. They've got their truths. They've got their false beliefs. They got their false beliefs. These people like their false beliefs. They don't like their false beliefs. These people love their false beliefs. They don't like their false beliefs. So they're having a fight over their false beliefs. Good. Yeah, got that one in. I thought that was that went over well. Then, <laughs> later on in the 14th century, a miracle happens. A superpowered, Holy Ghost-filled man of God shakes up the planet Earth, and he translates the Bible into English. English, because. Catholics Orthodox This is our Bible and we will tell you what we want you to hear Wycliffe full with the Holy Ghost said that's a crock God wants every person to have God's holy word Can you imagine that whole world hated his guts this guy was a super anointed Christian and to this day, I'm standing here talking about God's word in part because of that incredible man. Huh? Then, in the 16th century, Martin Luther in the Roman Catholic Church, he's a priest, he's looking at all this stuff and he says, Hey, 
there's a bunch of crap in here. <laughs> I did something odd for a priest. What was it? He read the Bible. The guy sneaks off and actually reads it. He comes back and says, what? You gots to be kidding. This guy had nerves of steel. This guy had courage of a pack of lions. I mean, this guy was hardcore powerful. Walked up to the church door and bang. 1525, another guy, and it cost him his life, did the same thing. What did he do? Translated the Bible from the original languages, not out of Latin like Wycliffe. He sent it in. Here it is. Here's God's word. Here's the best Greek manuscripts we've got. Here's the best Hebrew man. He translated it so that you and I could have a Bible. Unbelievable. He's praying for them as they're burning him alive at the stake. Hey, listen up, saints. Here in America, we got a bunch of lukewarm, Mickey Mouse, gutless, useless Christians. Not everybody is like that. These guys, hardcore great. I'm standing here now, Tyndall, going through the Bible because he sacrificed his life. Super servants. 1611, what happened? Boom! A sh incredulous event shocked the world. The king had the Bible translated and printed for the common person in Old English. These are vowels. I like the King James Bible. That's, I read it all the time. I like the these are vowels. I'm an older person, but younger people, they don't like the these are vowels. <laughs> That's fine. It's okay. Read it. Don't get hung up on this. This Bible swept the planet Earth, and to this day, to this day, is the greatest piece of published material in the history of the world. It's still number three on the Bible seller list in the 21st century. I see I find that more interesting than some of you. <laughs> Lord, I'm dying here. 1734 AD, oh, the Holy Ghost says, hey, it's now time for me to make my move. And suddenly, the Holy Spirit starts to move through England and America, and the great awakening occurs, and some super preachers rise out of the ashes. Edwards, Whitfield, a whole bunch of others. Same thing happens again. 1733, the great John Wesley forms the Methodist Church. Okay? That church has nothing in common with this one, Methodist. Nothing at all. When you hear Methodist and him, totally different church. John Wesley would peel his skin off if he came back and saw the Methodist Church now, it's just completely been overrun by the devil. This guy was a hardcore Pentecostal, Holy Ghost man of God. He was a nasty preacher with a gasping anointing. Next, the second great awakening occur occurs in 1800. Same thing, a bunch of hardcore preachers take off with the anointing Sweeping England and America just killing it sacrificing their lives George Finney was a Multi-millionaire he was a lawyer and had a dramatic conversion left Everything behind to go preach the gospel People would flood the altar hundreds of people falling down crying begging God to forgive them staggering Preaching anointing. This guy was a nasty, filthy Holy Ghost preacher. The demons hated his guts. <laughs> See, most Christians in America, the demons are fine with them. When the devil hates your guts, you know you're doing something right. 
1854 the Catholics decide hey, we're not getting enough attention now We got to come up with some more d divine insanity they start cook they start ramping up the insanity and now Mary's conceived in no sin and The Pope is infallible All right, That's nice the Holy Ghost takes his shot at it again in America in 1901 in a Bible College small one in Topeka, Kansas the Holy Ghost falls and the students all start speaking in tongues giving birth to Pentecostalism in the United States Eric Nineteen oh four it happens in Wales a Massive outpouring of the Holy Ghost false shocking healings and miracles routine Staggering move of the spirit devil wiped it out in a year 1905 Billy Sunday hits the sawdust trail here in America He's an ex pro baseball player. He leads hundreds of thousands of people to Christ. He preaches to thousands of people with no amplification. This guy was strong as a moose, traveled the country like a bear, preaching like crazy. Massive preaching anointing. Massive. Nineteen oh six a half blind African American goes to California and starts the Azusa Street Revival. The whole planet ends up over there. Unbelievable outpouring of the Holy Ghost. People two and three blocks away falling in the street before they got to the building. Devil wiped it out in about a year. Incredible move of the spirit. Shocking. Nineteen forty-seven, United States, a healing revival breaks out in this country. A whole flock, a whole covey of faith healers pops up all over the country. They're everywhere. A. A. Allen, Bill Branham, Oral Roberts, a slew of them. We had one here, Neil Frisbee up in Northeast Phoenix. All kinds of them sweeping the country. Hundreds of thousand people got healed. Lasted for over 10 years. It was amazing. Amazing. Devil wiped that out in about 10 years. 1947, a shocking event occurred. The planet Earth was shaken to its core. What? A kid chasing a goat finds. The Dead Sea Scrolls in one of the caves the Romans missed when they wiped them out in 70 AD. They didn't catch them. I think the Holy Ghost kept them things in them jars and kept them with his hand on. That's that's my personal belief. I can't prove it, but that's what I think happened. Those things shocked the world. One of the books, and the only book, is the Isaiah Scroll. It was the only book in the Bible. That was there from beginning to end. It was shocking. Shocking when they saw it. It was virtually closely identical to the text we use in our Bible, the Masoretic text. The Jewish scribes were so meticulous in copying, copying the text that it was almost, there were a few small errors here and there, but it was virtually, not quite, but virtually identical. To the one we got our Bible off of a thousand years later. That's amazing to me. <laughs> the devil says, I've had enough of this crap. In 1948, he develops the World Council of Churches. Oh, wow. The devil goes, I got to get in on this action. I'm going to put together a bunch of my servants and we're going to run this show from here. He don't run the Holy Ghost. 1949, Billy Graham rises to prominence. Southern Baptist preacher gets out of Bible college and boom! He becomes the world's greatest proclamator of the gospel in the history of the world.
Okay. In the 1970s, what did we come up with then? Yes, charismatic Catholics. The Catholics start speaking in tongues. California, nobody can believe it. The Jesus people, boom. Southern California in the 70s. Thousands, hundreds of thousands, all kinds of people saved. Nineteen ninety four, the Toronto revival ends up sweeping the entire planet. The Holy Spirit falls on an airport in Toronto, Canada, and then superpowered Kundalini spirits follow in after him and fight the revival tooth and nail. This mixed gospel ends up sweeping the whole planet, of which Phoenix is the number two hub in the entire country. For kundalini spirits and this revival this revival it's Phoenix number two yeah. 1996 what was that the Pensacola revival yes this thing went on for five or six years powerful revival different from Toronto because they had a preacher there named Hill and he was a hardcore repentance preacher the Toronto revival was basically themed Let's party with Jesus. Let's have fun partying with Jesus. The Pensacola Revival had a hard repentance message, and they were recruiting souls first before they went into the moving of the Spirit. There was Kundalini in that revival too, yes. I mean, but nothing to the level of Toronto. And the next big thing to hit the United States will be here. For the first time in the history of America, I asked God for a deliverance revival, and I'm getting one. And people from all over America will come here, not this building, I'll be out of here, here to get delivered and healed from all over the country. They're going to come right Let's go to your future at some point in time Which I don't have the date and I'm working on it <laughs> The rapture of the church will take place Then the tribulation will take place or if you if you're a uh, Post trib they occur at the same time so It's either going to be the rapture here and then seven years or it'll be the rapture there and then there's seven years. There's some mid-tribs out there, too, so it'll be three and a half. So we know it'll be either first in the middle or the end. Got out of that, didn't I? Yeah. I saved myself about a stack of emails. It's all right here. What was your question, sir? What did he say? What did that guy say? Yeah. What about him? I said that when he comes and takes everyone, uh, he was saying that since Moses was the first one and then Elijah was the second, that Moses was the first one, what? Uh, being taken, that was that death, that past death. That had died? Yeah, that had died and he was taken by oh. the Oh. Uh, now, I wasn't there when that happened. I'm not really interested in that. <laughs> <laughs> now, then the tribulation kicks in. First, middle, or end. And then we know it's seven years. We know that. It's clear. And then at some point in time, at the end of the tribulation, we know the parousia occurs and the return of Christ. So, we know according to Luke 21 that only born-again, overcoming Christians go in the rapture. Whether it's the beginning middle or the end of the tribulation doesn't matter The ones that are not overcoming Christian the lukewarm carnal ones Which is about 90 90 some percent of them miss the rapture and have to go through the tribulation and Keep from taking the mark of the beast Okay, so 
we know at some point in the future very close 20 something is the second coming of Christ and that starts the millennial we know that Karina, can you take Katie in back? <laughs> now, <clears throat> then, during this period, the New Jerusalem, where every born again Christian that survives the tribulation and every born again Christian that goes in the rapture finds their eternal home there. That's where you live. Okay? You don't live in heaven, that heaven is a temporary residence. If you were to die right now, you go to heaven, but that's only a temporary residence. Your permanent residence is the New Jerusalem. In 30-something date, the millennium ends. Okay? And there is a final rebellion of Satan. There is Judgment Day where everything is thrown in the lake of fire. Hell is thrown in there. The fallen angels, the demons, the sinners... Everybody is thrown in to the lake of that burns with fire and brimstone and Then we know I uh, don't know what the date is. It's 3,000 something The earth is renovated and so is heaven we get a new heaven a new earth and eternity then begins and Never ends and on the planet earth it, the planet earth is restored to Eden conditions we overcoming born-again Christians Rule the planet earth for Christ who reigns from his throne in Jerusalem The nation of Israel is reestablished in Jerusalem King David has given his throne back as the king of Israel and We go through eternity and human beings are Processed thereafter on the earth and you if you're an overcoming Christian you help manage the planet Earth into eternity. And you're given specific jobs and duties depending on what you do here. If you're a certified screw up here, you don't get any rewards there. You get no duties, but the overcoming Christians are given different rewards and they're given different jobs, so to speak, spiritual careers. Not like a trade school here where you learn how to clean teeth. No. A little different and you go into eternity serving God but only because you served him here you screw this up you screwed that up you don't end up in hell that's not a screw up well done but your rewards and ruling nations and all that stuff the Bible says is not for you How'd that go? What you, sir? You got a question? Yes, ah. She has a question. Oh, okay, sweet. I'm really curious. Um, you say you're saying an overcoming Christian. Uh huh. Okay, I'm striving to be not a sinner. Uh, not after tonight. You're not striving anymore. You're going to get delivered tonight. What's your question, ma'am? Oh, nothing. I was oh. in my hand. What's your question? Oh, I just named it myself. I called them lukewarm carnal Christians, but they've they've been called other. I, that, that's my estimate. Yeah, ninety-eight percent are about like that. Yeah, particularly here in America, they're just useless here. <laughs> we're trying to turn that around here, but as you can see, it's we're not booming yet. <laughs> All right, that was the history of your family tree. Okay, YouTubers, I gave you your history. That's your family tree. That's your family tree. Did you notice something funny about that family tree? Did you notice something funny about it? Many times the Holy Ghost only found one person to use, and that one person shook up the world. The Holy Ghost and one person. Makes a majority Amen. One person decided to translate that Bible One person and the Holy Ghost
can't be stopped. Did you notice some of them people? They were nothings and nobodies, particularly them faith healers. A. A. Allen, Bill Branham, Sister Edder, Catherine Kuhlman. No, no, nothing and nobodies. Grew up with nothing. Broke, impoverished, no education, no, no royalty, nothing. One person and the Holy Ghost makes a majority. See, the Holy Ghost don't vote. The Holy Ghost doesn't vote. People vote. He don't vote on anything. Nothing. He's a boss. Yeah. That's right. <clears throat> he was one guy half the time here. One person decided to bolt out of the crowd. One person ran for it. One person stood up. One person fought back. Half the time they were total losers. Sometimes they weren't. Finney wasn't. No, were, Billy Graham wasn't. Yeah, they were smart. They had education. But most of them, most of them, preacher, they were nobodies. To the world the Holy Ghost found him somebody all he needs is one preacher one one sold out preacher one and the Holy Ghost and he's the majority hey check this out see that church right there castle church Luther stuck that thesis up there. One guy. One guy. Did it. One guy shook up the world. Was he perfect? Did everything he say right? No. No and heck no. That ain't the point. It was one guy in the Holy Ghost. God looks uses flawed people, not perfect people. He used perfect people, but he can't find any. I had a sucker. I mean a person comes to see me one time <laughs> He said brother Mike well, who, would you have a church you'd recommend I'm asked this all the time I oh, would you have a church you'd recommend I'd like to get into a, one of these really Just fantastic church where it's really blooming and it's everything's perfect. And it's all great I said I know a couple of them, but I'm not gonna send you over there <laughs> Yeah that would ruin their streak. Check this out. Here's, here's Wycliffe, and that's what that Bible looked like. You believe that? That's what that Bible that but one guy changed the planet Earth. Wycliffe, one guy said, I'm gonna print this Bible because God told me everybody needs a Bible. And if it costs me my life, he said, I'm printing that Bible. And the Holy Ghost says, I'm I'm with you. There it is. I'm making this up. Now that's the church Luther was at. Now that's a new door, obviously. I mean, there's been some renovation, but I thought I would point it out for you. There's Billy Sunday standing on a podium, no amplification, preaching to thousands of people under the powerful anointing of the Holy Ghost. Billy Sunday was a monster preacher. Hey, you're not going to quit your. What about baseball? The baseball. I got the Holy Ghost now. I'm gonna be a preacher. One guy turned America upside. One guy, the Holy Ghost, and one person, no matter who they are, is the majority. There it is. There's the Bible school in 1901 where the Holy Ghost found the students. Started speaking in tongues. That's where Pentecostalism started in the United States. 
it's gone hog wild now back then it was a lot different than it is now They didn't have a bunch of people rolling around like nuts <laughs> Laughing like kooks that didn't happen back. then. That's all carnal stuff now There it is that's the school right there Bill Parnum was the guy's name I think his name There's that guy from this guy here in Azusa Street, there, there's Seymour, that black blind preacher. One of his eyes was blind. Did you know that Seymour didn't even speak in tongues? That'll jack your theology up. Did you know that? He didn't speak in tongues. And there was a miracle. They didn't even, they saw all the miracles. See that guy? That's Charles Finney. If I just looked at that guy, I'd repent. <laughs> Look at that face I'm telling you right now if that guy come in the deliverance center There'd be people repenting from blocks away falling out of their cars begging for mercy Look at him Time to repent God Look at that unbelievable the Dead Sea Scrolls. There's a famous copper scroll that was here about 15 years ago. Did you see it when they toured toured? I saw that copper stroll the the Isaiah uh, stroll wasn't a scroll wasn't in this That trip. I never got to see that. That's what I really wanted to see but a lot of it was really interesting Dude did you happen to notice this that these incredible moves of God were only started by one or two or just a couple of people or, or just sometimes one person Eric one person Powerful ain't the word for it preacher powerful's incredible That's putting it mildly one person shook up the whole country. You gotta be kidding me. No one person in the Holy Ghost You're in the majority He don't vote Where will you be tomorrow? Well, let's go over. Let's look at your options. <laughs> well, tomorrow, if you leave here tonight, you could just do the same crap you did this week tomorrow. You just keep doing your normal crappy life. Number two, if you die tonight or tomorrow, you could be in hell. Or you could be in heaven, depending on if you're born again or not. Believing in Jesus ain't good enough or the rapture could occur, occur tonight or tomorrow something like that and we could be out of here if you're a pre-tribber I'm saying if and you would be in heaven or in us is the Greek word for heaven you'd be given a brand new supernatural body like Jesus body and this Junk would be gone, and I have some super steroided out physique and everything. I'd have it all. <laughs> I don't have it now. Or four, if you're a carnal Christian or a spiritual loser, you'd miss the rapture and have to go through the tribulation and hope you can make it or be martyred. If you're martyred, you end up. In the throne room of God the Bible says at the throne because they saw the martyrs there John did If you're not martyred and you take the mark you're dead you go to hell That's the end of you. That's another option for you Number five number five option would be what? Yeah, you could be martyred Rapture could occur you could have missed it. You could say hey, I missed the rapture, but I'm not gonna miss heaven I'm not taking that mark I'm not I'm not gonna do it. I'm not worth, I'm not gonna become an idolater I mean, I don't think anybody's gonna do that if you can't serve God now with no no persecution How are you gonna serve him then with persecution? I mean that's gonna I don't see that happening, but let's say some Freak Christian pops up somewhere and says I'm not taking that mark. I Blew it during my life, but I'm not gonna blow it now. I'm dying and they let's say they do it well then they would go to the heavenly throne right Option six 
you could die of one of the plagues in tribulation during the tribulation there's all kinds of plagues there's all kinds of dying and everything it's awful I don't want to go through that now or you could make it through the tribulation alive what happens to you you would enter the millennium as a regular as a human being you don't get killed you don't get martyred you happen to make it through I'm assuming there's a lot of people because there's all kinds of people there the Bible says so they gotta have made it not everybody dies during the tribulation okay I, I, I shouldn't have gone through this part it kind of brought the thing down <laughs> <laughs> however God is going to do everything he can to keep that from happening to you and he's already done it. He's still doing it God is going to rewrite your history Now these seven people check it out Were in the Bible and they were all named before they were born God Looked at him in the womb in this area on a female looked into there you had kids one <clears throat> I don't know why you felt you needed to tell me that. <laughs> now, there's an ex womb, and a kid came out of there. God looked into the these women's wombs and saw that child in there and named them before they were born. The most famous would be the obvious Yahshua, Matt, Matthew chapter one. Okay, these seven people, but check this out That's a short list an incredibly short list of the human beings God looked at in the womb No, no womb. There. There's one Looking for wombs. Here's one God looked in there and Saw a person there before they were born this list is nothing, nothing compared to the long list. I'll prove it to you. Ephesians chapter 1. God has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, cosmos, humanity, so that we should be holy and without blame before him in love <clears throat> you what's your name Emilio. Emilio there he is Emilio God looked at him before he was born and said to him I want you Emilio and I want you to be holy and I want you to be without blame and stand before me in agape, unconditional love. That guy right there. We'll handle that later. Don't worry about that. That's them trying to disrupt it. Before you were born. Let me tell you something. You got to be an important person. For God to look at you before you're born. You got to be a important person. <coughs> Some parents don't even want to look after look at the kid after they're born. <laughs> don't raise your hand. God looked at you in the womb. That was a while ago, ma'am. Hey, males females equal opportunity got to level it out you are an important person for God to know before you're born see people don't become famous until they accomplish something after they're born unless they're royalty then it's oh it's a big deal so-and-so is pregnant the baby's so great oh what's gonna happen if you're not royalty and you're like me run-of-the-mill Nobody cares about to you until after you accomplish something after you're born. That's how it works. Sorry. No, that ain't how God works. Before you were born, he looked in your mother's womb and he saw you 
and called you Called me to what? Hey, you know what without blame means it's not your fault When you get washed in the blood, it's not your fault anymore You sucked as a parent did you not anymore? It's not your fault anymore that went to Calvary you you stunk as a husband did you you were rotten you hurt not anymore when you came to Christ the blood washed you and you are no longer to blame There's no reason to be angry anymore is it? You know what that means without blame you're not at fault You spend your whole life running her down and criticizing yourself. You know why you're doing that? Because you, like a witch, sit around listening to demons. None of that came from God. He told you, you're not at fault. That's right. It's right there. You think I'm making this stuff up? Most of the stuff I don't make up. God called you to be holy you you got a porn you got this and that what are you doing? You were seen before you were born. You're not supposed to be living like that. You were called to be holy in the eyes of God You are not at fault anymore You are innocent Yeah, see it chosen you were chosen by your mom or dad <laughs> You gotta be kidding me I was an oops baby. Anybody know what an oops is? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. That's when a male meets a female at the bar. Ooh, having a couple of drinks, huh? Oh, have had a lot of drinks? Oh, you both looking real good to each other after a lot of drinks. <laughs> after one drink, mm, kind of iffy. I don't know. Six, seven drinks? Ooh, he's packing. Oh, she looked fine after six or seven days. My mom and dad got together after a trip to the bar, Eric. Huh? Yeah, and guess who popped up? <laughs> Better change the subject here. My daughter's sitting over there. Now let's get back to this. <clears throat> Don't you get it? I wasn't wanted, but when my mother got pregnant from that, God looked in there and saw me. Not my parents. God looked at me and said, I'm choosing you. You're a bastard baby? Not anymore. No. Uh -uh. No. Uh -uh. No, you mistake? Ha! Not anymore, honey. No, that didn't happen. God chose you before you were born. You can cut the pity party tonight. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 we are bound to give thanks always to God for you brethren. Who's he talking to? A bunch of stinking Thessalonians I got news for you Thessalonians ain't any better than Phoenicians <laughs> They're all the same sinners All of them Wait a minute here. I thank God for you you Thessalonians Beloved of the Lord agapao is the Greek word there. That's the same word God used to describe Jesus This is my son the beloved You were a mistake no God Chose you they thought you were a mistake father looked in there and took you I'm calling you I'm choosing you You are my beloved. This is my beloved son, Emilio. What? What did I just say? Oh, that's that's an apostate teaching. Is it really? If God calls him the same thing he did Jesus, what am I supposed to think about that? Let me think about that for a minute. Hmm. <laughs> oh, they're the same. They're loved the same. Agape is unconditional love. You are loved as much as Jesus Christ by Father. 
You can cut your pity party. You can get rid of them rejection demons tonight. Yeah, you have my you have my invitation to do that. Why? Because God has from the beginning chosen you. Jesus was chosen before he was born. Hail, Mother Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Behold, thou shalt conceive, and thou shalt conceive in thy womb. The power of the Holy Ghost. How's that going to happen to me? The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The power of the highest shall overshadow thee. That thing which shall be born of thee is from the Son of God. This is my son the beloved that same person has the same name as Emilio sitting over there Eric see that guy From the beginning you were chosen To do what be saved Salvation through what I guess most purification of the Holy Ghost and when you got washed in the blood you stand before God purified Chosen accepted perfect sinless <laughs> Second Thessalonians 2 13 sir <laughs> First Timothy chapter 2 Who talking about God will have all men be saved? Thalo, I want God who wants to have all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. There is only one God and one mediator between God and men, Jesus Christ the Lord. God wants everybody saved, including the rottenest sinners you've ever heard of. What's the name of that guy running North Korea? Duka Duke. That guy is on the Holy Ghost list to get saved. Yeah. Him and Trump yelling at each other, barking like dogs. No, the Holy Ghost stand there. Wait a minute. I chose both these idiots before the world began. I want them both. Oh, that's impossible. It is? Well, you don't believe God's word then. I'm not the apostate here. You are. They were chosen by God. For example, Second Peter chapter three: The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men, but He is long suffering. What's that mean? Patience, hupomone. It's patient endurance, not willing. Thelo, He doesn't want. Thelo means I want to. Not in front of it means I do not want to. I do not want anyone to perish, including your crazy relatives. Including your ex uh, Yeah, remember them? Oh, I know you do yeah, oh they <clears throat> Listen friends one person one person and only one person can accomplish unbelievable things if they grasp the scripture You know something even in a small ministry like this one We've had thousands of people delivered from demons at the house of healing and now here at the deliverance center over the years We've had hundreds of people healed literally Did you know? This whole thing was all started by one person that girl sitting in that wheelchair right there Started the whole cotton picking thing <laughs> One person okay. Now I'm not saying this is a big ministry. This isn't, but there's been a lot of people helped here, and one 16-year-old disabled person started the tipping point. Don't you see it? Can't you see it? And you have enormous value. You know why you're aren't a mountain to a hill of beans? You don't understand who you are. 
God looked at you and chose you before you were born just like he did Jesus. He picked you out. You're on drugs? You're wasting your life? You're Really? When you were chosen before you were born by God himself? And you're, as it says in the Old Testament, pissing your life away? You were chosen by God and you're wasting your life like this? No! It stops tonight. He wants you saved. Look, I want that. He doesn't say I need that. It doesn't say somebody's forcing me. He wants you to know the truth. He wants you delivered. He wants to help you. Revelation 22, the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, let him that hears. Wow. Let, let him that's thirsty. Yeah. The people that aren't those things don't do what? Don't come. Yeah, this is deep theology, folks. <laughs> Whosoever Thalo wants to, <laughs> let them come. And take the water of life freely. What's the key? It's your free will. You can choose to believe the truth about you. If you leave here tonight and think you're just Emilio, well, you know, I must have done, maybe I did something, screwed up and didn't get through to the guy. Maybe he wasn't, something went wrong. People waste their lives because they see themselves as having no value. That's why they waste their lives. Addicts don't like themselves, so they waste their lives. Yeah. 30 years later, they got nothing. No friends, no family, no money. Everything gone. Why? They wasted their lives. They saw themselves as nothing. God. What? God chose you before you were born. He knew you before you were born. He called you to be holy and blameless in his sight, in love. Greek word agape, unconditional love. What does unconditional love mean? It means there's no conditions on it. Bible scholar. Something that's unconditional means there's no conditions on it. That means whether you're good or bad, Beautiful or ugly, it don't matter. There's no conditions on it. Now I know if you're a Catholic or Seventh-day Adventist or an Amish or Mennonite or some performance-oriented religion that focuses on works, I understand you don't like what I'm saying right now. I get that. But you're spiritually ignorant. I'm not. He drops a bomb on him. <laughs> you see, unconditional means there's no conditions on it. So if you screwed up this week, you're loved just as much this week as the week you had where you were booming. Because you were chosen before you were born. Now, how do you explain the gospel to people? Well, there's a certain way to share the gospel. There's, and then there's a certain way to not share it. When you shove the gospel down somebody's throat or push it on them or try to force them to receive it, you know, <laughs> now say it. I received Jesus as my Savior. Okay, we don't waterboard people and force them to get saved. This is a free will adventure. And God only uses free will. 
He does not overrun it You have a free will tonight to walk out that door seeing yourself as you saw yourself when you came in and that's your prerogative That's your privilege and God will not stop you from doing that He will not stop you from doing that but if you are able to grasp this thing Without being forced to receive it you just open your heart and let the Holy Ghost give it to you and Realize that God wants to help you to realize that Nobody else, but God actually likes you <laughs> Some of you have you checked out your personality yeah. God Some of you no offense, but yeah, I like you because I got the patience of Job. <laughs> Nobody else likes you. Father likes you. And that's the only person that matters. Now see, when you come to the water to drink freely, the devil sometimes will try to stop you or make it hard on you. Now this little girl here can't get a drink. But she has to get up on her tippy toes to get a drink. And sometimes you're going to have to press your way in with more adversity than that. And that's where the rubber hits the road here in America. The gutless, carnal, loser Christians, they don't see themselves as chosen by God. They don't see themselves as blameless. They don't see that. They still listen to demons tell them you're at fault and you screwed up and here's your regrets and here's your failures Why don't you keep all that when father has no interest in you keeping all that he doesn't focus on any of that As long as you keep thinking you're this person down here struggling a loser failure bad family bad family history no money I can't do this I can't do it. as long as you keep listening to demons tell you that you will never grasp the truth about you as a person you'll never grasp it you'll waste your life people waste their lives all the time constantly wasting their lives John 3 now here's a verse that was recently discovered that nobody's heard it says God so loved the cosmos human world humanity that he gave his monogenes one and only child a son that whosoever pistuo believes by stepping out on their faith Did you hear that? That's a Greek verb. Believing, click, doesn't work. You go to the Lutheran church on, on a Sunday morning, what do you find? You get your uh, program handed to you. Remember that? And there's a prayer in that program. You ever been to a Lutheran church? You haven't? You backslider. <laughs> you go to the Lutheran church and you get your program. And you read your little prayer out of your program. The demons tell you, you're killing it. That is, that is great. Wow, you're knocking it dead. You go to Orthodox church. Ooh, I want one of those cone heads. I'm nailing this thing. Wow, ooh, total deception. Pistuo, you must step out on your what you believe. It's active faith, it's stepping out faith, it's action faith. Pistuo, believe. See, it's not believing, click. That isn't good enough. A re I did a, a radio show on on uh, a, a Barna poll that came out and 
can't remember the but there was a huge percent of Americans who consider themselves Christians in that poll literally Imagine that Virtually none of them were Christians, but they checked the Christian box Why no pistol? So that whoever believes in him should not perish but have Everlasting life for God did not send his son into cosmos and world to crino judge the humans But that the world cosmos human world might be sozo delivered Oh man God looked in that womb and saw you before you were born. He said I want this one for me I want that one to be holy I want that one to be saved. I want that one to be blameless. I want to love that person unconditionally. And I'm not going to judge him. I don't want to judge him. And Jesus said, you don't have to judge him, Father. I'll take the judgment for her. God. Did not send his son into the world to judge the world But the world Cosmos human world might be saved or delivered through the Sun <laughs> This thing's killing it He that pistuo Steps out Active faith, not intellectual faith, not good enough. He that believes on the Son is not judged. See, you got a critical spirit, so you think you're a fruit inspector. You're actually deceived. You live in a world of delusions. There's no there's nobody to inspect. You just got a critical spirit nitpicking people. You got it probably from your mom or your dad. God does not have a nitpick spirit He don't have any spirits he does not nitpick people Do you know what would happen if he said I do Rick where's Rick at here's a guy here We got to take in the back Peter watch this guy God does not judge people You judging yourself You're hard on yourself Well, wait a minute Mike. This is false doctrine. I got gotcha. you I Sinned and did this and that and that and that no you don't got nothing. You're not getting me That stuff was washed away at Calvary God doesn't even remember the crap you did You remember it your relatives remember it some friends remember it. the demons remember it. They always remind you You're judging yourself God is not judging you He's trying to help you God's not judging you. He loves you unconditionally He wants to help you Guess what happens if you reject all this You're judged already is judged you already judged When you said no in this life you're judged and when you said no the demon said we say yes we want him and They took you The devil wants you he'll take you Believers are not judged See in these in, in legalism and these churches that preach legalism and behavioral stuff Pentecostal holiness holy this and holy that What they're doing is Missing the whole point of the gospel The point is not what you did or didn't do. It's what Jesus Did and didn't do for you They're missing the whole point of the gospel. Oh You're preaching the license of sin what God Almighty 
I'm one of the nastiest, filthiest, anti-sin preachers you'll ever hear. But it's not God condemning you. I'm trying to save you from the devil. He'll send the demons to get you when you open the door to sin in your life. And God will not stop them. Because you're going to sow what you reap. And that's the law of the spirit world. You're going to keep sinning? You're going to keep sinning? Well, Father's going to keep weeping over you and the devil's going to keep kicking your face in. And he's brutal. He fights dirty. <coughs> he brings in depression and regrets, misery and sorrow. Psh, man, you get a load of misery and sorrow in your life, you wish you were dead. In fact, some people, they kill themselves. Check this out. You didn't chose me. I chose you. I ordained you. Hey, you guys have got ordination papers. You've been ordained in the family of God. What's your ordination papers? It's the fruit of the Spirit. That's how you tell if somebody's ordained. If you got a certificate from a Bible scholar, that means nothing. That means you studied a bunch of stuff and you got a, you took a test and passed it, and then they gave you the certificate. It's got nothing to do with the gospel. The gospel is not in eat or drink. It's <clears throat> Check this out since you are ordained Look at that you've been ordained to bring forth fruit is that physical fruit no anybody can feed the homeless Muslims do it Catholics do it uh, Atheists do it Okay unbelievers do it. that's got nothing. This is spiritual fruit The spiritual fruit the hurricanes a lot of good people are running down there to help those people and that's great And I hope they keep doing it that's got nothing to do with their spirits. That could be coming out of their soul. Sympathy and pity comes out of your soul where your emotions are. The fruit of the spirit comes out of your spirit, man. That's a reflection of him. You've been ordained to bring forth spiritual fruit and your fruit should remain. And when that happens, whatever you ask the Father, he gives you Why because by definition you're not asking a miss John 15 if you were of cosmos if you were the of the human world the world would love you Because you are not of this world So many Christians are so ignorant they're so foolish they want to fit in Dude, you don't fit in anymore You're not supposed to fit in How come nobody likes me they're not supposed to like you fool When I was living in sin, I had all kinds of superficial friends. I had a bunch of guys I went to happy hour with, business associates, different people. They weren't real friends. Most people don't even have any friends. Did you know that? Most people do not have any friends. I'm not joking. That includes Christians. What's a friend? When you're in trouble and you need you really need help. Then your friend scope drops rapidly. God said, I chose you out of the world. You're not supposed to act like sinners. You're not supposed to live a carnal Christian life. You don't belong in there. You were seen before you were born. You were chosen by God to be holy and without blame before Him in love. You don't belong out there. 
You're a special person chosen by God. My daughter's getting it. I chose you out of cosmos, the human world. That's why the devil uses people to hate you. He uses the people at work and your family members to tear into you because you don't belong there. Oh, you're not getting it. You're trespassing. You're just traveling through, Jack. Or Jill. This is not your home. Oh, I live over here. We've got a nice house. No, you don't. Your, your real home is in the New Jerusalem. And I think it's not that many years away. That's only a personal opinion. I can't prove it. I don't believe it's that much further. I really don't. That's where you really live. That's where you really belong. You don't belong on porn. You don't belong sleeping with somebody. You don't belong lying and cheating. You don't belong screwing the IRS out of tax money. Stop doing that. Those IRS people are going to hell. Your money's going to burn. You are going to the New Jerusalem. You're a special person. God himself called you before you were born. He's getting it too. Uh-huh. Hey, check it out. As you grow up, you reach trauma points in your life. Every human being reaches a trauma point in their lives. Big ones. All of them do. Guess which one's huge? P.E. If you want somebody scared literally half to death, you get into high school and you got P.E. class. I'm talking real fear here. In PE class, the good athletes are usually chosen as captains. You're not leaving, are you, ma'am? You're not leaving her. Are you leaving? You're not going to leave, are you? Oh, no, you can just stay right there. I've got. I've already got that taken care of. You can stay right there. Don't take that. Don't leave. The worst thing that ever happened to you is go to high school, A, and B, P.E. When you're on P.E., they choose teams. Oh, I see. You've got a, got a whole room full of dropouts here. Well, let me explain it to you. In high school, <laughs> when you have sports, basketball, whatever the sport happens to be, and they rotate sports in P.E. class, the better athletes get to be the captains, okay? And fortunately for me, I was a good athlete when I was young. I was a boxer when I was in junior high and all that stuff. So I got to be either the captain or if you weren't the captain, this person's a captain, that one's a captain, they start to choose. So somehow these two flip forward or call a number or something, and one gets to go first. Well, if this one goes first, he says, I'll take, I'll take Bob. Now, Bob's usually the best athlete of the group in, that, in your group. And then this guy picks his next, right, Eric? And then he picks Dick. Well, Dick's usually the second best athlete, or thereabouts, generally speaking. It doesn't always go like this. But, and then they pick down, and then the nightmare on Elm Street hits you. The last guy. And the, and the rejection and the pain, I'm not even making this up. This is a very traumatic event to be chosen last in a PE class. I'm not joking. And, and the kid that's going to be choose last usually knows it. <laughs> and he's cringing. He hit... And normally he stands this way. <laughs> Head down. Oh, God. And as it goes down the list, 
it gets the, he sink the person sinks lower and then all right Larry come in <laughs> God we get stuck with Larry oh well, at least we got an excuse when we lose that person is never forgets that I'm not even joking. It cuts into your soul. It just like a knife. And once you get a cut on your soul, it never goes away. The Holy Ghost does the opposite. He's the captain of this team. The devil's the captain of that team. The devil chooses first. He chooses the best. The Holy Ghost chooses second. He chooses the total loser of the group. <laughs> the devil chooses again. Holy Ghost chooses the second worst goof in the group. When they're done choosing, the devil's got all the better players. The Holy Ghost has all the crappy players. He chose them. First Corinthians chapter 1. If you would have been chosen in PE class last, God now chooses you first. I'm not I'm telling you the truth. It says it right in chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians. It goes over how you choose a team for sports. <laughs> Stop making stuff up. Romans 5. When we were without strength in due time Christ died for those who were looking good. Oh, far from it. He went to the other end. Is it my choice? Who's the worst athlete here? Who's got two club feet? Who's stupid? Who's an idiot? I'll take that one. I'll take that one. I'll take that one. Can you come to God and be smart? Hey, Charles Finney. Brilliant. Yeah, God rejects nobody that comes in. Whosoever will may come and drink of the water of life freely. But when God's choosing people, he likes to choose the people that ain't got nothing. He prefers it that way. You know why? Those people have the greatest testimonies of anybody. They're more grateful for God's miracle working power than people that are raised with everything who expects stuff The Holy Ghost specializes in losers When you were ungodly Christ died for you then Paul says hey scarcely will somebody die for this man a good man maybe whatever but check this out soon as when God commends his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners what does soon as mean it would be it would be as if I took this chair over to someone and said here we ran out of seats but here's a seat for you have a seat here sit there While you while you were whoring yourself out while you were drunk on your fanny while you were cursing like a drill sergeant while you were living in sin while you were stealing and robbing and raping and pillaging when you were doing that God brought a chair over for you here I want you to sit there soon as time.
you say that's unbelievable. Yeah carnally mentally humanly. Yeah, that's unbelievable It's the opposite of what people do People don't want somebody that's a piece of garbage sitting in their chair stay out of my chair You stink you're filthy father brought the chair over to him. It says soon as it means to come to them and set it beside him. here 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 you a whore here sit here you a drug addict sit over here you a child molester? Oh, you like to have sex with kids? Here, sit over here. Oh, you duck Kun Kim or uh, North Korea? You want to kill everybody? Here, sit here. You a serial murderer? Here, have a seat here. You say, well, they don't teach us in my church. You ain't in your church. This ain't your church. It never will be your church. We, we go over the truth here, as hard as that is to go over. Listen, if you suck, you are in line for a monstrous miracle from God. If God did that for you when you were a sinner, how much more being now justified by his blood <laughs> shall we be sozo delivered from the wrath of God? You are not going to stand there on judgment day and be tossed into the lake of fire for your sin because you ain't got any sin. Son, you've been declared not guilty. <laughs> By what? Your good works? Oh, no. By the precious blood shed on the cross of Calvary, I am not guilty. I am blameless. In my sinful light, life, can I be honest? Not really a good husband. Still working on it today. Not a not a, a prince like this man here. I'm sure he's just I'm sure he's just angelic at home. I was not a good husband. Wrong. I am not guilty anymore for being a bad husband. I've been declared preacher not guilty You don't understand brother Mike I slept with 200 200 men. Uh, no, you didn't No, I sold crack to sixth graders. No, you didn't no, you didn't No, you didn't I'm a child molester I'm molest, right? I molest third graders. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you didn't. I'm a wife beater. I be no, you didn't. No, you didn't do it. You didn't do it. Hey, when you fell on your knees at Calvary, you didn't do it anymore. Wiped out. By what my wonderful personality? Oh far from it the precious blood of Christ washed me free. That's my only hope. I have no other If God died for you when you were the worst person on the earth how much more now that you are his child since you've been called by God before you were born he knew your name before you were born. You were called to be holy. You were called to be blameless in his eyes. You were called to be loved unconditionally. How much more now is he going to help you and bless you and care for you? If he loved you that much when you were his enemy, how much more now? If when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son How much more? After being reconciled will we be delivered? Translation you can't lose First second Timothy chapter 2 therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ no man that wars Entangles himself 
with the affairs of this life What's wrong with you? What are you nuts? You've been called to be a fighter a Soldier a warrior and you live in this Mickey Mouse existence worried about every little thing that doesn't go your way griping about this and that Pissed off over this person and that one and the idiot at work and the moron in your family tree Really? Dude, you're not supposed to be part of this world anymore. You were called out of this world You are to be a warrior and a fighter That's what you were called to be yeah. What kind of fighter like like the American military blowing up countries no, this is a spiritual battle Impleco, what does that mean? To get tangled up with something. Why are you a soldier? So you may please the one who chose you to be a soldier. Listen, you're called to be a fighter, a soldier, a servant of the Lord. You're not called to constantly be looking for love in all the wrong places. Oh, this relationship fell down. I gotta find me another man. Ugh. You're a deceived, deluded fool. You ought to be doing cartwheels. You got rid of him. <laughs> Who she left me, took this and that. Dude, you ought to be leading a parade. <laughs> Thank God you got rid of her. You're not called to live in a dysfunctional, ignorant relationship. You've been called by God to fight. In Placo in Greek means what? Yeah, there they are. There's all the born again Christians in America. <laughs> See them? Oh, I got a car payment. Oh, I need a better job. Oh my God, I need to promote. Oh, geez, if I'm not going to get that, well, I got to go. Oh, gee, my wife, she sucks. I need a new wife. I need this one. Oh God, I can't do that. Oh my inheritance. Oh, look at that. Oh, they're gonna steal my hair. My sister got more socks than I did. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Look at that right there. My kids. Oh, God. Somebody got more than my kids got. Oh, jeez. I hate it. I hate those parents. I, what? You fool. You've been called out of this world. You've been called to be a fighter and a soldier for Christ. Not entangled up in every little thing that goes on. It's, it's demonic. The demons are beating you, they're outsmarting you. You know what the devil does after he gets you entangled in his web of worry, fear, concern? He then eats you alive. Spiders eat their prey alive. That's what the devil does. He beats you down with sorrow and misery and sadness. He sends people to criticize you and degrade you and humiliate you. He constantly attacks you because he knows you're entangled in this world and you can't get out. You don't have any faith to get out. You can't pray anymore because you're too busy with the things of this life. So he eats you alive. He slaughters you slowly with misery and sorrow and regrets. You got caught living in this world. Now you're going to pay for it. But you're going to pay slow and you're going to suffer slowly. You're not going to get out of it. Yeah, I heard your prayer. God did too. It'd be better off if I were dead. I don't know why I'm around anymore. What am I doing here? Why don't I just leave? God, will you? I've had people send me prayer requests. Would you ask God to help help me? I want to go home. I sent him an email back. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> You're going to repent of your sin. You're going to repent of self pity. And you're going to become a soldier because you've been called by God to fight. You're going to give your testimony two years from now. I wanted to kill myself. I sent an email to Brother Mike. Can you pray with me? Now look at me. Healing the sick. The devil will eat you alive, friend. First Peter 2. Let's get ready to close. You are a what? Chosen generation. You are a 
royal priesthood. That makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, if God himself called you before you were born, you must have been an important person. That's an, a sign of royalty. Before these kids uh, get born in England, uh, what's, what's some people called? The guy with the big nose, the idiots in England, the royal family. What are they called? Before the, before the child's born, oh, it's a big deal. Ooh, everybody's planning for it. Poor kids gets born in that family. Can you imagine that? Soaked in sin, disasters, adultery, chasing money, politics. They live miserable lives. The devil calls them. Hey, you're royalty. You belong to me. Hey, you were called by God. You're not royalty. But now he made you royalty. The blood of Christ makes you royal you are a what peculiar people now that's not talking about your weird personality <laughs> parapoiesis is the Greek word it means you are a treasured or desired acquisition by God such as you buying a new car <laughs> If somebody walked up to you and said, hey, here's 50 grand, Eric, go down to whatever dealership and pick out a car. I want you to buy a car. I guarantee you he's not going to go there and look over all the cars and he said, I like this one least. I want that one. I can't stand this car. I don't like the looks. It doesn't fit right. The seat sucks. The whole thing's terrible. The gas... No, he buys what? He wants. He wants parapoiesis. He wants the best car. God called you in the womb because he wanted the best car. You are a peculiar people. Hey, you have been chosen. As the best car on the lot. You're not an Edsel. You're not a Ford Fairlane. You're not a Pinto. Boom. Bang. You, you, dude, you're a luxury car. You are a Hagias, a sacred person. Doesn't that make sense? If God Himself called you before you were born, you're a special person, aren't you? You must be sacred in some way. Doesn't this all this add up? Am I helping anybody here? Is this working? I'm trying to paint a picture here for you to see yourself differently. I'm trying to get you to look in the mirror and see somebody else in there tonight this is what I'm trying to do, I guess. Why are you a peculiar people, a desired acquisition? Because you are to show praises. You are supposed to be a praise vessel. And you're not. You're so bogged down in your Mickey Mouse life, entangled, in placo with the things of this world, the affairs of this life. You don't have any time for praise. You're too poop. You're too worn out. Life stinks too bad. That wears everybody out. A stinky life. Doesn't it? Just common sense. Hey, God. Called you in the womb. He pulled you out of darkness into his marvelous light so you would be a praise vessel. You know why Christians don't praise much? I'm not talking about singing in church and, you know, <laughs> this is not praise. Hallelujah. Glory. Oh, now here's some big praise coming. Glory to God. 
praise comes from the heart Christians don't praise because they're not grateful they're not grateful because they're entangled in so many things of this life they ain't got any energy or time for praise too busy working for the man too busy chasing the almighty buck too busy fighting over whether your rights are being upheld at home or at work too busy fighting for your own interests oh jeez you're not supposed to be fighting for yourself anymore the holy ghost fights for you because you were called and chosen by god to be holy and sacred in his eyes unconditionally loved Your whole concept of Christianity is jacked up. What am I trying to do right now? Unjack it. Lord, I'm trying. Can you choose your own destiny? You sure can. Proverbs 1 29. They hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would have none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. What's going to happen next? They will eat the fruit of their own way. And be filled with their own devices. I send out this list to people who want to be delivered. They send me an email back. I read your list, and I'm going to church to get prayer tonight. And I'm reading, I'm reading these scriptures, and I'm reading this book. And I write back and I say, stop doing that. As long as you continue to try to fix yourself, doing it your way, the way you think it ought to be done, the way you were taught to be done, and the way you think you, this is how you get healed, this is how you get delivered, and this is how you become a, this and that as long as you keep trying to fix yourself doing it your way that's how much longer you will stay sick so now go back cancel that and go back down the list there's the scripture for that one one here's the scriptures for two follow these you can't do things your own way and make it it's not gonna work The turning the way of the simple, they will slay them. The prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Whoever hearkens to me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. Isaiah 65. <coughs> you are they that forsook the Lord. He's talking to the Jewish nation. And you forgot my holy mountain. Therefore, I will number you to the sword and you shall bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, you did not answer, and when I spoke, you did not hear. If you keep doing stuff your own way, I'm sorry, you're not going to make it. If you keep trying to fix yourself, it's not going to happen. You're not going to make it. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I gave them their scriptures tonight about what you really think about my friends. How much you love them you called them before they were born just like you did Jesus you called them the same name you called Jesus beloved the blood that Jesus shed removes their sin from them and gives them a royal priesthood a sacred calling 
they are a chosen vessel and yet there's some people here tonight Lord who live in negativity and lies they see themselves the way other people see them negatively critically lying now I'm asking you tonight Lord for these people who don't see themselves the way they should they don't recognize how important they are how wanted they are how loved they are how holy they are how sinless they are they keep living with their parents criticisms and their parents negativity they keep living low self-esteem a low self-concept they don't understand you want to answer their prayers you want to help them you want to bless them you like blessing people I pray right now Lord that you will forgive each person here tonight who has been hard on themselves who's been hard on their loved ones hard on their family members hard on their kids hard on their parents please forgive them they don't see themselves as a royal priesthood and they don't see their family members that way either they don't understand that you want everyone saved you want everyone healed you want everyone well you want everyone in heaven you want no one in hell no one you love the worst the way you love the best the same and I'll pray Lord tonight in the name of Jesus any person here with a critical spirit self-criticism self-condemnation any person here who sees themselves like their past chronic negativity chronic failure living in regrets regrets for who they married regrets for where they were born regrets for their parents their adopted parents everything I pray tonight Lord you will lift these regrets from their soul and set them free let them go from here tonight delivered from negativity from low self-concept from being hard on themselves and others because you are not hard on them when they were at their worst Christ died for them how much more would you want to bless them and love them tonight how much more Lord I don't know but it's a lot it's a lot I'm praying right now that you will forgive each person here tonight who has criticized themselves and others running other people down in themselves criticizing them nitpicking them I pray you'll forgive each person here for living with regrets constantly living with regrets I should have married that person I should have taken that job I should have moved here I pray right now you forgive them because regrets wear the human soul completely out regrets steal joy and peace from God regrets cause people to lose faith in life it brings in sadness and misery and sorrow and they're not supposed to have these things anymore Lord you called them you chose them just like you chose Jesus you chose them to be healed and to be well and to be delivered and I pray tonight you will give them this faith to step up and take these benefits of the gospel in the name of Jesus amen amen thank you Jesus thank you Jesus raise your hand if you need prayer tonight raise your hand real quick a couple people okay come on up to the front here and see me 
real quick here. You got regrets in your life? You've been hard on yourself? Come up here real quickly and just stand here and face me. Make a line right here. Just face me. My ministry team's going to come up. We're going to pray our guts up for you tonight. You got regrets. You made bad choices. You got bad religious advice years ago, and it destroyed your life. It happened to me. I'm with you. I lived in bondage as a Christian for years. My church told me it was Assembly of God religion. They told me that Christians couldn't have demons. I suffered for years with demons and didn't know I had them. Years I suffered with anger and lust I couldn't get rid of. The devil made a fool out of me. A big one. Made a complete fool out of me. I lived a yo-yo Christian life years ago because I was up and down and up and down. It was awful. So I know where you're at. I was there. I was there. I was there. Hey, will you tell that lady right there in that wheelchair? Tell her not to leave. We'll get him last. Tell her. <clears throat> And just close your eyes if you would. Let's pray now. Father God, I need you to forgive me right now. I got regrets. I got remorse. I look back on my life and I did some things that were so bad it was unbelievable. And the devil won't let me forget them. He keeps reminding me of it. He sends me people to remind me. He sends me friends. He sends me relatives. Something always triggers it. Now he sends me idiots on Facebook and they remind me of things I'm so sorry I got on Facebook father forgive me forgive me for running myself down I didn't know I was chosen before I was born I didn't know I'm a I was chosen for royalty I didn't know that God preferred the poorest athletes on his team and the devil always takes the best ones the Holy Spirit was looking for somebody like me all along and I always thought it was always somebody else somebody better than me somebody smarter than me somebody with gifts I don't have any gifts I see it now it was all a lie God chooses chooses the people at the bottom to give them gifts he chooses the people at the bottom because they they love better they're more appreciative they're more grateful that's why he does it. I'm praying now, Lord, for these men here tonight. There's some men here that got this horrible demonic machismo. And the demons told them when they were young they had to tough this stuff out and not shed any tears. That's a lie from the pits of hell. The devil is blocking your healing because you won't open up and give him back your tears. The devil stole your tears. And he does it by beating on you for a long period of time. And pretty soon your heart gets callous. Paul called it getting seared. And pretty soon you, you can't even cry anymore. And the Holy Ghost is standing here looking you right in the face right now. The Spirit of God's going to move tonight. He's spectacular as usual. That's all he knows is greatness. He wants to help you. He wants to heal you. If you'll just confess it and open your heart, if you'll just confess it, the devil stole your tears. He can give you those tears back. That hardness that you have in your heart is sitting on a foundation of anger and frustration. When you get angry and frustrated, you lose your tears and you can't be reached by the Spirit of God. You can't be healed. The person then becomes the walking dead Lord Jesus forgive me Lord God forgive me close your eyes and just say it Lord Jesus forgive me oh there it is come out of there Lord Jesus forgive me forgive me dear God forgive me dear Lord forgive me dear Lord <clears throat> forgive me dear Lord let it the tears go come on now come on let go of this machismo here here this guy here's got a high IQ okay let's let that thing go and go for childlike faith that's what he needs not high IQ 
the desperation is going to come upon this man of God here. The demons are in there. They know he knows about him. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. Hurry up. Come on. Close your eyes. Stop thinking. Just reach in here. Reach for your spirit, man. Stop using your mind. Come on. Take a big breath. Get out of them now. Come on. Reach out of your there. There he is. Come out of there right now. There it comes. Right here. Come out right now. Come out of her right now. Come out. Come on. They're gonna kill you if you don't get them out of there. You get them out now. You get out of there now. Come on, Father, give him back his tears. He will never fulfill his destiny. This block wall in there has got to come down. Come on, let that thing go. Holy Spirit, move now. Holy Spirit, break this wall down. Give them back their tears. Where are you going? Where are you going? Come here. Come on, close your eyes, Lord Jesus. What do you need, honey? What's wrong with you? Come out. Go. Now, who hurt you when you was a kid? What's her name? Come on. Who did it? What'd they do to you? Verbal abuse? Verbal abuse? There it is. That's it. That's a wound right there. It's verbal. They're trashing you when you were young. You're ugly. You're fat. You're stupid. We hate you. You're out. You're not part of the group. That's the one. That one right there. Come on. Just repent of it. Come on. Just repent of it. Come on, sweetheart. Who did it? Who's hard? Who was hard on you? Who was it? Who was hard on you? Honey, please. Who did it? Just say the name. Whisper it. Whisper it. Who was it? Patty? Huh? Patty? Open your heart now. Father God, wherever Patty is right now, we forgive her. We forgive her right now in the name of Jesus. And we command Patty's verbal abuse to come out right now in Jesus' name. Take a big breath and blow. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Go. Father, forgive me for seeing myself as low, second base, second rate, a doormat, a nobody, a nothing. Come on. Come on. Patty, come out of there right this second. Patty, come out. Yeah, let your tears go. Come on. Stop. Don't hold back and you'll get healed right now. Come on. Don't hold back. Come on. Come on. No, there's a wound in there. There's a wound from Patty in there. She's already dead, but she's still here. Patty, in the name of Jesus, come out of that body right now. There he is right there. Here he comes. Every spirit from Patty. Come out of her. Come out of her right now. Every verbal abuse, criticism, every negative word, every lie, every time she yelled, come out. Come out right now. There it is. There it is right now. I forgive him. Come on. Forgive him. You have to forgive him. Come on. You have to forgive him. Come on right now. Come on. Do not leave. You need prayer. Do not leave. We'll be here plenty of time. We're going to stay here. Do not leave. What's going on? What's wrong with you? Come on. No, you're not done. Who's next? Go. Who's next? Somebody else. Verbally abuse. Who? Who's the other one? Come on. No, just do what I tell you. You'll get healed. Okay? I've done this before. I know what I'm doing. I'm not trying to hurt you. Who was the other one that verbally ran you down? It was yourself. Come on. Yourself. Come on, go repent of it. What you need, sweetheart? Lena. Lana, what do you need from God? Um, I just wanted him to reveal to you whatever that he wants you to pray for me. Do you speak in tongues? No. You don't? Okay. Now, just uh, follow me. Relax. Stay there. Come on, you're not done. Okay, now just pray after me. What does that mean? Uh, that, you're not supposed to know what it means. Why not? It's glossa. Huh? It's glossa. It's tongues. Oh, it's in Hebrew? No. No, it's a heavenly language. You're not supposed to know what it means. You don't have your heavenly prayer language. That's what's wrong with you. I asked the Lord to only make me tell to speak in tongues if uh, 
if he I would understand what Oh it is. no, you you're asked you asked a miss. That prayer was not going to be answered. You're you're uh off. In the name of Jesus. I wanted the Lord to guide me. I wanted the Lord to guide me. I was guiding you right now. Your prayer is getting answered right now. You just asked me. You said, can I say something privately? Uh, privately? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. That man that's over there, his name. Go! That big guy? He is my husband. Uh -huh. We recently got married. Oh. We are on the playground. Yeah, I know. So that's taking a call on me. I know it is. I will possibly be asking the Lord to forgive me. I know. He already forgave you. Now, go ahead and repent of criticizing yourself. You have? Yes. You speak in tongues? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay, stop. Now, do you hear her speak in tongues? Can you hear her speak in tongues? Yes, I can. Okay, your gift of tongues is blocked. Go! Okay. Uh, glossa is made up of syllables. Like English or Spanish, mm -hmm. for example, heaven is two syllables. Uh, Como esta is four syllables. <laughs> Glosa is made up of syllables. And you notice how your language kind of runs together, and you repeat the same sentence over and over. That's the same in English as stuttering. Okay, it's easy to fix. You, um, she speaks in tongues, but you are you don't speak in tongues, but you already have your gift of tongues It's already in there in your spirit man. I have something. Hmm? I have something. I know that I just told you what you had <laughs> I just told you what you had okay, man. I don't need you to tell me what now Here's the deal you just follow me Okay, she's she's here for my comic relief. Now I'm gonna help you. Okay now ready just close your eyes you repeat after me. Boraba, Keno Sada, Vekova, Alule, Vondarama, Veko Moshive, Uta Vaba. You notice how I was speaking the short syllables? Okay, now you try that now with your language. Use different syllables. Good. There you go. Good. Okay. Now see what she just did. Can you, you just pray for me? I am praying for you right now. Okay. Now stop making me laugh. Close your eyes. Raise your hands and just do what I tell you. Okay. Lord Jesus, she is filled with stress in her soul right there. She is filled with stress and pain in there and regrets and she needs help and there's a fear spirit hiding in her body that's why she jumps <laughs> father God right now I pray you will allow her to repent of living with these regrets and unbelief and doubt and that whatever the problem is you are going to help her through it and you will never leave her or forsake her and this fear she has in her soul she is going to repent of it right now it's, I just told you what it was it's a fear spirit there's a spirit in there okay? she, amen she's going to rebuke that demon and command that thing to come out and go come out take a breath and blow come out come out of my body Keep blowing. Use your mind and command him to come out. Go. Go. Just forgive him. Come on. You gotta forgive him. Yeah, I know. He acted. He was evil. He acted evil. But it wasn't him. The demons in, in him did it. They told him to do it to hurt you. But you must forgive him first. Matthew 5:44. Love your enemies. Come out right now. Come Love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those those who persecute you. Now, what's his name? Come on, angel. We 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 forgive you tonight. I ask God to bless you tonight. Let your tears go. Demon of fear, I command you to come out of me right now. 
Power. How you doing on your tongue? Try it again. Go. Under a Mosha Baravasha that I buried him under switch syllables. Kulava Shandora Vashi Dick. Good girl. Switch syllables. Switch syllables. Good girl. You get out of my body right now. I hate your guts. Come out right now. Satan, I hate your guts. Come out of my body right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Come out, I said. Come on, men of God. Fight for your life. Yeah, how do you how you doing? What do you need? Tell me the truth. What's going on? Today? It was your fault. But it's because my son moved back home. Yeah, what? My son moved back home, and um, I just don't trust him. He tried to kill me before. Mm -hmm. What's his name? Jonathan. Jonathan. Yeah. Okay. But, um, you love him. I do. Yeah. But, um, and what's hurting you? Why are what's hurting? You? I have MS. You have MS? Yeah, and I've been doing pain medication. Yeah. And now, I, I'm going to stop. Now. Okay. Now, when you were young, did somebody hurt you real bad? My parents got divorced when I was 13. Did that hurt real bad? Okay. And I think my dad molested me, but I can't be sure. And then, and then later on in life, did you ever hate yourself when you were young? You did? Okay. Now, when you hated yourself, a spirit of infirmity entered your body and a, a spirit of infirmity is a demon that causes weird illnesses in the body and they don't ever no that was him the spirit of infirmity that got in when you were younger causes weird illnesses that don't respond to medical treatment and they're the ones that cause MS it's usually related to self-hatred or self-disgust or not liking yourself and it's that combination of things the spirit uses to give the person MS raise your hands oh, I'm going to show you raise your hands thank you Jesus What's your name again? Kathleen. Kathleen. All right, Lord, I got Kathleen right here, and she's in deep trouble, and she is going to die before her time. Because when she was young, people hurt her. Her parents wounded her deeply when they got divorced. She was crushed. She couldn't believe her family was disintegrating. And later on in life, she hated herself. And that was a sin. And that was an open door for an evil spirit to enter her body. And he is trying to murder her in cold blood. And she's going to repent right now. Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry for what I did. I'm so sorry for letting these spirits in my body. Father God, I want you to go back in time for over every relationship she ever had. Every ugly man that used her body, that tried to control her verbally and emotionally, that wounded her and facilitated this spirit of infirmity to murder her. Hey, you better start fighting or you'll be in trouble. Say it. In the name of Jesus Christ, come out of me. Forgive her, Lord, for what she's done. She didn't know it, but she was committing suicide. Satan, I bind your power. Sorrow and grief and misery, I command you to come out of the woman of God. Come out. Come out of there. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Self-hatred. Bad men. Critical men. Dominant men. Controlling men. Go. Come out. Come out right now. I repent of it, Lord. I repent of hating myself. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. 
Come on, sweetie. Pray harder. You can get healed tonight. Just repent of it. Let all these bad men go. All of them. Every one of them. Just let them go. Turn them over to the Lord. Every man that hurt you, just release them. Lord, I forgive my parents for getting a divorce. I forgive them and I release that pain from my childhood out of my soul right now. Multiple sclerosis, I curse you. Die! Die in Jesus' mighty name. Die in Jesus' mighty name. Low self-esteem, low self-concept, self-hatred. Come out! Come out of there! Get out of them hips! Come out of them hips! Get out of her legs! Come out of those feet! Get out of those arms right now! Get out of her neck! Come out of that body right this second! Come out! Multiple sclerosis! I curse you! Die! I curse you! Die! Die! You die right now! Get out of me right now! Get out of me right now! Good girl! How you doing? I'm good. What's going on? What do you need? What's wrong with you? I just... You get out of my head right now. Hurry up. What's wrong with you? I just can't focus. Something's in here. How long has that been going on? Oh, long time. Long time. Months? Like years, years? Decades? Years. When did it start? Get out of my head, I said. Probably. Hey, get out of my head. Probably my whole life. Oh, no. Come out there. Your whole you know, life? Like, Come out? Just in school, camp. Were you bullied in school? Mm, no, not really. What was wrong with school? Come out. I just always felt that I couldn't do it. How about preschool? Something bad happened to you? I don't think I went to preschool. And then, no, preschool. Before you went to school, was something bad ever happened to you? I said, come out. What are you doing in there? Come out right now. Not sure. You're not sure? Did anybody hurt you when you were young? <laughs> My dad was abusive. Verbally? Verbally, physically. Was he hitting you? Yes. What was his name? Tony. Tony? Tony. All right, raise your hands. Father God, you see this beautiful woman standing here? Tony is still living in here. And the demons put a lie in her mind when she was very young that she was stupid, incapable, dumb, unable to learn. And it was a lie. And she believed it. And a spirit got in her brain. And he told her many more lies about herself. She spent her entire life thinking negative things about herself. Well, tonight, she's going to repent of it in the name of Jesus. And this seducing spirit, you liar, hiding in her brain, you are coming out of there tonight. You're coming out tonight. Father, I repent. Say it. I repent of running myself down, saying negative things about myself, seeing myself in a negative light. I repent of it right now in the name of Jesus. And I command the spirit in my brain that got in my head when I was a kid to come out right now. Get out of my body right now. I command my dad's abuse to leave me tonight. Tony, come out of your daughter now. Come out. Take a breath like this. Blow. Come out, Tony. Come out, Tony. Come out of there. Keep blowing. Tony, come out. Every beating, all the pain in my stomach, all the wounds from Tony, I command you to come out of me now. I have a Heavenly Father now. I don't need a dad. I belong to my Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, come out. Come out right now. Leave me now. Negative thoughts, go. Lies about myself, go. Come out. Did you check your body out? Check, huh? Any change? 
It's the same, worse, or better. Huh? Is it the same, worse, or better? A little bit. My arms. Okay. Now, now, who who else you got bad feelings about? Bad feelings. You got bad feelings about who? You. Okay. Now, there's no way for you to be healed unless you repent. Go ahead. Father God, I don't like myself. And I repent of it tonight. I repent of it right now so I can be healed. It's a sin to feel bad about yourself like it is to be feel bad about anybody else. It's a sin. It's a sin to feel bad about myself. You spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus. I command you in the name of Jesus. Come out of my wife. Come out of her. Go now. Come out. What are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? Rage. Rage? You have authority over him. You can cast him out of there. He's a monster. Yes. Yeah, he'll he'll scream in a minute. You get out of there. Demon of rage. You get out. Hatred. Anger. Bitterness. Come out. There he is. Come out. Take a breath and blow. Come out of me right now. I hate your guts. How you doing? What's wrong with you? I, uh, Come out of me, I said. Right now. So, that was that guy you were talking about. Tonight. You know, he scarred at a young age. The kid picked glass, and it did. No, it's, it's, I had oh, horrible self-esteem. I was yeah. a skinny little kid, yeah. and I had horrible self-esteem since since I can remember, since I was like five years old. Yeah. And now Kelly, Kelly de delivered me about six months ago from Port. You get him out of there. Get him out of there. You're, come on. And uh, I did really well. Let your tears go. Come on. After a lifelong addiction to pornography, Kelly delivered me to help me no. pray uh, about six months ago, and I backslid last week. And, uh, no. Pissed off myself, okay. And, uh, now listen. Uh, let me clarify all this because you're you're misunderstanding everything. That was a demon of rejection that got in when he was a kid. It's a spirit of rejection. They hide right here in your mind, in your brain, right in front of lobe. Are you going to do something about him or stand there? Come on. Get him out of there. You get out. I want you out at any cost. Come out of me right now. There he is. There he comes. Come out. There he comes. You got a demon of rejection in there. Okay? Porn's not the issue. That's only, that's the lust demon in here that, that helps you feel better about yourself. It gives you an escape. But he's tricking you because once you escape into his area, then the next time it's worse. Then it gets worse and worse. He's setting a person up for boom, total destruction. Okay, but your real enemy is is him. And you didn't backslide. How'd you come up with the idea you backslid? You get out of there right now. You're bossing him around. You tell him to come out. Because I didn't, you know, I didn't do it for six months, and all of a sudden I was just drawn to it, and I just did last week. Okay, you're not backslidden. You're the devil is putting stupid thoughts in your mind. It's not true. There's nothing wrong with you. They're doing it. It's not you because you don't want it. I know it's not you. And then the condemnation comes in afterwards, of course, you know. That's him. And yeah, I mean, I You're not being judged. Here. I had it up there. Yeah. Okay. Now let's go ahead and repent. Ready, go. Father God, I repent of thinking I backslid. That was a lie. And I'm sitting around all day listening to demons lie to me. How'd she do? Listen, she she's got low self esteem. That's she's supposed to. That was a demon getting ready to come out. Tell her to come back up here. He was the demon was getting ready to leave. Hey, 
that thing in there hates me and it, he hates you worse he's tricking you he hates you more than he hates me listen that was a spirit in there about ready to come out okay. that was him no it's but not it. That's them. That's not an. It's not an it. It's a person. Okay. It's a person. Did you ever read Luke chapter thirteen? It says that Jesus saw a woman in the synagogue who was all bent over. Remember that story? Huh? Well, the Bible says there was nothing wrong with that woman. It was a spirit of infirmity. There's nothing wrong with you. But you let him in because you turned on yourself. And if that's the same as turning on him or turning on him. Right That's a sin. If you talked about her like you do yourself years ago, that would be a sin. Correct? Well, you were asking the devil, hey, come kill me. I hate myself. I want to die. She was asking for it. Not knowing she was doing it in the spirit world. She hung herself. She can unhung herself now. If she repents. Go ahead. The Lord was in tears when you were trashing yourself. He hates your guts. Worse than he hates us. He's tricking you. Did you repent of that? That stupidity. You didn't backslide. There's nothing wrong with you. God has no problem with you. You're condemning yourself. It's not. It's not real. You're making it up. I've been. I've been my own worst enemy for a long time. There, the demons are telling you to do it. They're your worst enemy. You get out. I said. Get out of my body right now. You come up in that right now. There's nothing wrong with you. I haven't been able to cry or anything like you said either for a long time. They're blocking it because of self condemnation. You're hard on yourself. And it seals your tears. Just repent of it. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Come out right now. Go ahead and repent. God, I'm so sorry. I'm talking myself into sickness and insanity. I'm ruining my own life. You get out of my body right now. Did you hear me? Get out right now. Spirit of hate and anger, I bind you in the name of Jesus by the blood that Jesus shed, and I command you to come out of my body. Right this second. What's going on here? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with her? What's what's a diagnosis? Oh, cerebral palsy. Okay, now that's a that's a spirit that comes down through the family tree and usually hits the kid in the womb in there. What's wrong with you? Pardon me? I have a lot of enemies for some reason. Okay. How long has that been going on? Four years? They followed us from Ohio to Arizona. Okay. Now listen. Matthew. Now just listen to me now. In Matthew chapter 5, the Bible says that we are to love our enemies and bless those who curse us and pray for those who despitefully use us. Did you know that? Okay. Now, would you be willing to do that right now? Your ride's here? Okay, would you be doing willing to do that when you get home? Okay. Is this your birth daughter? Is this your birth daughter? Okay. The demons in your family tree up here came down and hit her in the womb. Through your, through you, 
on the cross. Come on, right finish. Okay, so to get her healed, we have to get you healed first. I'm trying to do it right now. I'm trying to explain it to him. I'm starting it right now. I'm trying to tell you right now what, what we have to do. Okay? Now, could you come in and see me uh, for a counseling appointment so I can talk to you? Yeah. Okay? And then can you bring her with you? Yeah. Okay. Okay, will you do that? Call me this week. Will you call me this week? I will. Okay. Tony, Tony's going to get one of my cards for you. Okay. Tony's going to get one of my cards for your rides here, okay? Call me this week. I'll explain the whole thing to you, okay? And you're going to get healed first, and then we go for your daughter, okay? Will you do that? All right, Tony's going to get one of my cards, okay? Thank. What's your name? Thank you, Constant. Constant, nice to meet you. Confessing. Are you going to let him stay in there? Oh, my God. He's a killer. He is a murderer. He's capable of murder. He'll beat somebody up bad. You'll go to jail. Did you repent of that? Do you speak in tongues? You don't speak in tongues? Okay. All right, let's try it. Ready? Now, just repeat after me. Burraba. Kelosata. Veko V. Emulasive. Kola Vasheke. Akuva. Bonda. Notice how easily you're repeating that? You notice that? That's it. We, do you know, did you notice that? Did you notice I was speaking in short syllables? You notice that? And you were repeating me. Hey, why'd you stop? Those were demons coming out. Those were demons coming out. You got. Okay, now did you hear that thought? Yeah. You hear what she just said? A spirit put that thought in her brain. He said, I can't keep going. What he really means is, I don't want to keep going because I'm going to get thrown out. He's using negativity, which she was raised on, to beat her. That's not going to happen. Okay? You're going to sit over here. You tired? Are you tired? Okay, sit over there. Sit over there. Hey, we're this close. All right? Ready? Father, I repent in the name of Jesus of hating myself, carrying around my dad's negative words, carrying around all these bad men I've had over the years, all the negative things. Now, this time I'll pray, and then you add some syllables on your own, okay? Any syllable. There's no wrong answer seeing it. Use any syllable. Come on. There you go. That's it right there. Hey, do you speak in tongues? Oh, good. Come on over here. Go. Say it loud. Louder. There, follow him. There you go, let it go. Good. Who else needs prayer? Come up here. Spirit of epilepsy. What's the root of that? Well, what? Uh, What's the root of that? Well, things that happened in my life as far as my memory. Anyway. My parents were involved with, um, they were all in anesthesia and stuff like that, and they transferred. I just know the last couple of weeks I've been praying against that, and I've gotten a freedom in my brain that I haven't had before. But I mean, you know, anyway. What, you mean it's already gone? No, it's not. No, it hadn't left. And it's it was certain, caused by what? It's certain, when I was born, I, I, I was, I was, my mother had allergic reactions to this and the doctor took a, a thing and turned me around I was free to oh okay you know, great and, you know, I got it yeah watch yeah. this yeah I'll show you how to yeah. beat that one yeah. Yeah. I'll take a different one. route this time All right. All right. ready okay. Lord Jesus I thank you that a problems occurred in the womb when I was in there and I thank you that I I thank you that I was uh, breech and the cord was jacked up 
I thank you for all of that and I give you praise for it go ahead let him have it thank you for all the bad things that happened to me with my parents thank you for all the difficulties I had to face with my parents louder Make that anger demon in there listen to that. Make him listen to it. How's it going? How's it going? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about right now? Just all the you just had a negative thought. What was it? <laughs> regrets. Yeah. You won't repent of your regrets. Oh, man, yeah, we're in trouble, man. Trying. Keep coughing. Come out right now. Come out of me right now. Come out right now. Keep coughing. Come out right now. You won't repent of your regrets. How come? You really believe you're no good. Is that really what you believe? You bought that load. You're like talking to Nigerian telemarketers. Hello? Oh, I'll send you the money. That's what you are. Those are all lies. That's all fabrication. See this guy right here? He's got a terrible rage demons in there. And he can take command over him and get him out of there, but he's not doing it. Because he's afraid that rage demon will manifest. Now, why aren't you forgiving yourself? I don't know. It's hard, I guess. It's hard? No, it's not. If you felt the same way about that guy, that would be a terrible sin on your part, wouldn't it? Remembering all his screw ups and failures and sin, right? You mentioning it, hey, you're, you're no good. You suck. You fit. You're doing that to yourself. We can't get healed if you're doing that, can you? What you're telling God is the blood of Jesus is too weak to cover me It covered Mike and it covered that gal over there, but it's not good enough for me That is crazy The blood of Jesus would have saved Hitler had he wanted to be saved He didn't want to be saved so he took the hill, but he could have been saved that's how powerful it is, but you're telling God that you're worse than Hitler. Are you going to really live with that? That's total. To me, that's total insanity. The blood of Jesus doesn't cover your sin, but it covers His. Well, that means God's a respecter of persons. That means God has flaws. That means God's a failure. He's a screw up. That's what you believe You didn't say that but I'm putting it in other words You're saying I got regrets and I can't forgive myself and the blood of Jesus Doesn't wash them away. They're still here. I'm still dwelling on them Correct I know that but your negative feelings about yourself are killing us You feel like a failure and you have fear they're going to keep doing it. So that means you have unbelief and doubt Correct Okay, go ahead and repent of it. Are you getting him out of there today? Okay, you turn on him Negativity come out of me right the second self-hatred self-loathing Hatred of my body, hate to hatred the way I look. Negativity. I repent of it right now. Negativity. Come out of me. Get out right now. Get a girl. There you go. Force him out. Force him out. There you go. Good. Tell him you come out. Get out of there. I thought that was you, What are you doing? This guy this guy's killing me. He's driving me nuts. He, 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 now the demons are tricking him because they're telling him that that's important information. 
and it actually isn't. What's important information is he's a born again Christian and he's unconditionally loved by God. Then he said he backslid last week. He never backslid. A backslider, somebody says, "Hey, I'm done with God forever. I'm out of here. Screw you. I'm gone." He never did that. He got self-condemned again over what he did. I want you to get out of there right this second. I want you out right now. Get out of my body right this second. You come out of there right now. Get out of there right this second. Demon of hate and rage and murder. I bind your power. I command you to. How'd that go? How'd that go? I'm, I'm working on it. How'd that go with the praise? Yeah, I do that all the time. Oh, you already did that? Yeah, I already, and I it didn't work. Well, okay. See, what, what happens with, in, on, on a daily basis? I, and, and I don't dwell on it. It happens. I'm constantly forgetting and then remembering. Like six days I've been after. Call, call, the call the bank and call the bank and take care of it. Transferring some money from bank one to bank two to pay my bills. That's just an example. By, uh, for 40 years, I've always wanted to, to learn dozens and dozens of songs. I'll start on it for two weeks, and then it's like that whole that whole mechanism, that whole uh, um, direction is completely obliterated out of my conscious. And it's kind of like I wake up a month later and go, man. You forgot. You just dropped the whole ball of wax. And I start out. I don't complain. I don't complain. I said, you know, in fact, one of these days is the right time. I will sing you a couple songs, you know, and, and that's what got me on, on my quest. It's like, man, you should be doing this. You should be singing. I said, well, that sounded like a pretty good idea. I'll have a pair of some questions. Good to see you again. Yeah, you too. Glad you came back. What's going on? You remember the first time I was here? Yeah. First time I was here. Yeah, we prayed for a leg or foot or arm or something. Shoulder. Were you that guy? Hand. Okay, yeah, good. Now, yeah. hold on, stay right here. Stay right here. No, it was last year. It was a long time ago. It's about six years ago. Yeah, last, six years ago. What was your question? Oh, it's blocked. It's being blocked. I literally you gave me a car to call. I literally put it under my cast and said, help me my uncle. I prayed all night. Nothing happened. Yeah, it's being blocked. God wants to heal everybody. Your healing's being blocked. All you got to do is figure out what's it blocking. It's like, this is good. But it did heal my sophomore year. I bought that. And then you feel how about that? I feel like I don't know what basis I'm supposed to have my faith that way to heal. So I put all my faith in God. Oh, right. Yeah, that happens a lot. This is a common problem. What happens is the devil blocks a healing, and then the person turns on God. Right. Happens all the time. You're like, you're like, you're like, a there's a million guys out there like you. I think there should be proof. Yeah. Like, I don't think it's right that you have to have blind faith to get that. No, it's not blind faith. You don't, blind faith don't work. It's by your heart. Blind faith does not work. Your faith has to be based on God's word, and you've got anger and bitterness in your heart. Mm -hmm. you're, you're angry. It's not really anger or bitterness, it's just not knowing. Not knowing. No, if it was just, that's incorrect. That's not true. If it was just not knowing, then you would want. If it, if it was just not knowing, then you'd be curious and want to know. But you've got a you've got a, a nasty kind of a anger thing in there for the good Lord. It's kind of a fussy, frustrated. Frustrated. Okay, yeah. yeah. But it's frustration that I don't know actually know if he's there or not. Exactly. I think it's no offense. I think it's BS. I'm not in hell. I'm not going to show that. Yeah, you're, you're frustrated with God. I get it. Go in the name of Jesus. I get it. No hard feelings. It's just valid. Being valid. It's not true. You've got hard feelings. Now, the first thing you've got to do is be honest about yourself. You got to be honest about yourself. You can't get healed if you live in a delusion. Now, look, you got bad feelings about God. This, this is a delusion. What you're telling me, it's a delusion. 
that you're not mad at God and you're not frustrated with God. I'm telling you that's what you are, and you're telling me no, you're not. You said you're frustrated. I said you're frustrated with God. Yes, you're frustrated with God. <clears throat> Here's what you did. It happens all the time. Hey, Lord, I need this healed. I'm going to believe with everything. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. It didn't happen. Ah, oh, jeez. It happens all the time, sir. You're one, you're, you're millions of you out there. It's a trick of the devil. You got beat in your mind. Excuse me? I'm not angry that it didn't heal. I'm angry about the fact that I can't know because of David. You can't know because of what? Way. I'm angry that I can't know if he's there or not because of David Hill. Like, why didn't that's, that's not true. That's a delusion. I just answered it. Yeah. Okay. That was good. I don't know. Something blocked it. But now you're never going to find God because you got a, you know, you got a frustration with him. I know, and the devil tricked you. He beat you, and it, and you blamed it on God. It was the devil that did it. He's your enemy, not God. You're living in delusions. It's not God who's your enemy. It's the devil. He tricked you. He's smarter than you are. Huh? No, I'm telling you. It's about who your enemy is. The devil's your enemy. And he tricked you. He beat you. He beat you up here. He outthought you. It happens to all of us. Dude, there's nothing wrong with you. We all face it. The devil is smarter than all of us. He, What's going on up the clunker? Uh, no, other question. So the so I had uh, I was dying. The spirits of that caused the erectile dysfunction. Yeah. It caused it have started happening like manifesting three years ago. And then um, before I was born again six months ago. But over every six months and there was a decline decline like in my ability to have an erection, maintain an erection. And then, you know, you know, once in a while I'll just check. But what I'm noticing more on a daily basis is that it just like, it just feels more numb. More what? More numb. It just feels like it's dying. I mean, it looks like it's shrinking. It looks like it's shriveling. Uh, what, is, what is that? Is that is this yeah, you better get them out of there. They're spirits, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, what about the negativity thing? The fear? Yeah, the negative thoughts. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I'm catching them more. Uh, I've been casting out the fear more, so it, it's pro it's progressing, you know, little by little. Okay, can we accelerate this so it progresses a lot by a lot? How do you do that? Yeah. I mean, you said you by your free will, by right. your rage, by your fight. Right. If I could get him to do that, that's that guy over there. No, I, I do fight. Uh, yeah. yeah, I do fight. Like, I mean, I cast out. I do Steve's cast out. Like you know, two three hours a day. I do David's cast outs. Yeah. So I've been well, I've been doing that for the last four months. You know. Regularly. Okay. Well, now we're getting down to the monsters. Okay. The controllers. Uh -huh. You've whittled it down, and now you're facing the monster. That's a monster. Yeah, and that's not going to get out with a cast out tape. You're going to have to come at him. Like, like. You ever seen a cage fight? Yeah. These two guys get in the cage, and they have the demons. Well, actually, what that guy has over there, they've got these rage demons, and you can't fight in that sport without them. 
You have to have them. So there's there's no gentle, loving, soft-spoken Christians in that business. You have to get that same rage, not from demons, but from the Holy Ghost, like Jesus had when he cleaned out the temple. And that's hard for people like you that think so much because they're always using their mind, and your mind's not where you're... He just came out. No one came out. As your mind isn't where your emotions are. And your righteous indignation comes out of your spirit, man. And you've got to hate this thing. Now you're smiling. Now that's not a good sign when I tell him he needs to hate that thing. He's, now he's laughing. Now I'm in deep trouble. Okay? You following me? you got to have that holy hatred for what he's doing to you. Because it's going to... This is not going to go to a good place. You cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. You must hate one of them. Hey. You must hate one of them. You cannot serve two masters. Jesus said you must hate one of them. How are you doing? So, okay, beyond that, let's get to the root of it. What's going on? Well, okay. So, what happened? You know, in like the last few months, been doing a lot of work, doing a lot of deliverance. But occasionally, I screw up. Right? Get mad at my kids. Maybe even like get mad at my wife. Uh huh? Immediately, I'm now, sorry for it. Now, um, stop right there. Hold on one second. Hey, what is she doing over here? What is she doing? Okay, now, did you hear me yelling at that guy? You cannot serve two masters. You must hate one of them. Did you hear me say that to him? Okay. So, Lord, give this beautiful woman the gift of hate right now for that demon who is killing her. Hate. Hate, then come out of me. I hate you. You see that? See? She's got multiple sclerosis demon, and if she doesn't get the gift of hate, she's going to die drooling on crackers in a care center in about seven years. This is serious. Now, oh, back to you. Hey. Uh -oh. That is a soul wound. And the devil uses the triggers, environmental triggers, to get that thing to come up. And in your case, you said a wife, kid. And the demons get them to act up, which triggers that wound. The question is, how'd that get in there? Oh, well, countless ways. I, mean, I thought I got rid of it because, I mean, I forgave my mom and dad. I mean. Okay, what your dad, who, who got that trigger in there? Oh, that, definitely my mom. What'd she do? Well, yelled at me all the time. <laughs> when you were little? Yeah, all the way. Why? And now, was she abused as a child? Not that I know of. Was she beaten as a child? Not that I know of. Was she verbally abused as a child? I don't, I don't know. She was adopted. Like she was adopted? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, her, uh, got it. Your mother picked up a spirit of rejection. And they hide right here in the frontal lobe. That rejection spirit morphed her personality over the years. So that by the time you came along, she, that spirit told her to hurt you. And so it was a verbal or physical? Verbal. Exactly. That spirit, rejection demon, told her and he found fault in you he found he found uh, errors or mistakes in you and that rejection demon told her to attack you verbally because that drove a, a wound in your soul it, there's still a wound in there because it flares up when your wife says or does something stupid or the kids do something stupid or don't obey or something it triggers that feeling in there and you re react to it like mother did ah! 
What's your mother's name? Oh, you know it's wrong. She knew it was wrong too, but she couldn't control it. See? And it sounds like you can't control it. Yeah. Yeah, but you whittled them all down except that was sexual. Lois. So help me understand this because every time, so I go through this like perpetual cycle, right, of like healing, and I feel good, and I'm on fire for God, and we're going well. That's your spirit, man. And then I'll screw up something. Yep. And then, and then everything that goes wound back. flares up. Well, that yeah. wound flares up, but then like everything like comes rushing back. Yeah. Anxiety attacks, panic attacks, heart pain. Right. Joint like pain, and it just all like everything, and then it's like I'm back up here from one. No. This was hard. It's like it seems like it's one thing, and then it's like everything comes rushing back. Yeah, I got it. Over and over again. And then, but though what you just told me was very important. You are back when you're a kid. When your mother's reaming you out. Remember how you felt? That's how you felt. It's it's not all coming back. They're pulling you back to your mother. Notice that? That's how you felt when she was letting you have it. And that's a soul wound. From Lois. Is she still alive? No. Okay. Close your eyes. Close them. There it is. Father God, come out. Father God, Lois, God love her. She's dead now. And there's nothing we can do. I'm sorry about that. It's too late for Lois, but she's still here. She's still alive. In the spirit world, she lives here in her son. Lois, all your wounds of verbally abusing him as a kid, reaming him out, degrading him, wounding him, running his self-concept down, hurting his soul. We know you did it because you were hurt and because you were wounded. You were rejected by your parents. You were adopted out and thrown out of the family. And that rejection demon attacked this man of God. Come out of me. Come out of that throat. Come out of there. Get out of that body. Lois. Lois. Leave your son. Lois. Get out of that stomach right now. All the frustration for women. You woman hater spirit. You woman hater spirit from Lois. Come out. Come out right now. You woman hater. Hating women. Hating wives. Hating mothers. Spirit, you come out of that body right now. Hating. Frustration with wives. Frustration with my children. All comes from Lois. These deep seated wounds. In the name of Jesus, come out. In the name of Jesus, come out. Here he comes. Sorrow and sadness. There comes a wound. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Come out. Here it comes right there. It's coming out right now. Hold that. Come out right now. Go. Come out, Lois. Lois, come out. Satan, come out and loose your hold. Come out and loose your hold. Get out of that body and loose your hold. Come out quicker. I hate your guts. Come out of there quicker. Come out faster. Come out, Lois, come out. Leave, go. Lois, go. Lois, go. Mother, go. No. I said, I hate your guts. Come out of me now. I hate you. I hate you. Come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. All of them. You get out of my body, Ma. I'm not doing this anymore. Stop hiding. Stop hiding in my body. Come out. Every, every curse word my mother spoke, come out of me. Every derogatory term she ever used for me, come out of me right now. Word curses, word curses. Food demon, come out of me right now. Using food as a comfort instead of the Holy Ghost. Come out right now. Food, 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 come out. Word curses, come out right now. Amen. Word curses. There it comes. Glory to God. It's a word curse. Yes. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Get out of my body right now. 
This thing is life or death. This demon comes out or I die. I am not going to die. I will live. Thus saith the Lord. You get out of my body at any cost. I hate your guts. You spent 40 years ruining me. Come out right now. 40 sickening years. Come out. It's gone. All right. Check out your body now and see if there's any change. Go ahead. Could you do this before? Could you do that before? What couldn't she do? What couldn't she do? You're the husband, right? What couldn't she do? What did she have trouble doing? What? Who? Who beat her up? Oh, what shoulder? Okay. Heel. She got Anything? It feels great. Uh, what about the legs? What's that? Oh, five knee surgeries. Okay, have a seat there. Have a seat right there. All right, thank you. Push your fanny back. Okay. Okay. Come here. Here, uh, kneel down there, will you? Lift her legs up. Lift her legs up. Yeah, you hold them right, right like this, see? And then you feel for the uh, ball on the leg. Sir, you follow me? Yes. See the ball on her leg? Yeah. The knot on oh, the yeah, on yeah. the. Uh, yeah. You follow me? Then you, you pull them out like this, and then you measure them up. Oh. Now, do you see, I happen to notice that this yeah, one yeah. is a little shorter than that one? Do mm -hmm. you happen to notice that? Yes. Okay, hold that. Come around here. Come around here. Yeah. Hold, no, come around that way. Hold, it, hold the knot. Hold the leg right there. Notice this leg's a little shorter than that one. Okay, ready? Heel. Father God, thank you for growing this leg out in the name of Jesus. I ask you, Lord, to realign these hips right now. Anything? Okay, then you check them out again. Put your hand, finger on the... You find the joint. There, let go. Let go. See? Hmm. Very nice. They're all lined up. Now stand up. And let's check out the hip. Try your hips out and see if there's any change. Now, is this shoulder still up real high than this one? Yeah, it is? This one usually sits real high, much higher than this one. Is it, you're saying, is it now? No, no, they're level now, as far as I can see. Can you see? Are her shoulders level? Where? Okay. Now, tell me if you feel anything. On these, you put your hand on top of the uh, pelvis bone. You find the pelvis bone in the person here. Feel that? Feel that right there? Okay. Then you pray. Feel that? No, at the top. Feel the top. You follow me? Yeah. See, there's a top of it. You know, can you see if those are level? They're level. By getting, looking back at me? Behind, is there any, either of these off? Are they off guess, at all? I guess this that one's one maybe a little higher. This one, okay, ready? Mm -hmm. Ready? All right. Lord Jesus, heal, please. Sense anything? 
Now see if you can walk any differently. Go walk down there. Can you run? Go run. Anything? Huh? Is there any pain anywhere? Not right now. All the pain's gone? All right. Now, uh, this woman here just got healed of a multitude of illnesses today. This lady right here. She's going to lead the praise tonight. We're going to join in. Go ahead. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, to give you praise. Lord, to give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for healing my hips, my leg, my shoulder. My shoulders are even. My hips are even. My pain's gone. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. My MS is gone. Glory to God. Now, can you... Lois, is she still in there? I don't think so. Now, I mean, I don't. You know. But now, a lot of times I've walked out of here thinking she is gone, right? Well, we did, okay, okay, well. So maybe Lewis Who? Melissa. Who's Melissa? His wife. Mm. But no, no, the wife's a spillover from the mother. Okay, she's a woman. Oh, oh she the Lewis mother. Mom. Oh, yeah, Lois, her mom. That's where he got this woman hater in there. And it's not him. He doesn't hate women. That spirit hates him. Yeah. Hates women. Yeah. Because oh, yeah, of his yeah, mother. Because yeah. her mother beat on him verbally very yeah. bad. Wow. Yeah, yeah. She was vicious to him. Wow. Yeah. And that's what led to all these other problems. Now, if. And this is what's going to happen. God in his mercy is going to let your kids screw up tomorrow. And when they screw up, if you have any flare-up of that, we know we didn't get it all. So that means we got a portion of it or half of it. So all we have to do is get the rest of it out. The reason he's not coming out is because you're getting uh, discouraged and frustrated. Like you just said to me just seconds ago, you go, well, I... Left here, and I thought they were out, and you were shaking your head like that, and you were looking like that. See, right. and when you were doing that, that was telling me he's frustrated. Okay, so if I can get you to just readjust here, click and realize that this is just we're gonna win, it's no problem, it's just a simple process. I've got a God's allowing me for my wife to screw up to trigger that wound to let me know it's still in there. But if she screws up and nothing happens, then I know I'm healed. If that makes sense. It's, it's like a medical condition. See, if my, if my shoulder's not healed, I'm walking around like this. Even if I blab off the word of faith crap, I'm still not healed. I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. I, dude, you're not healed. Your shoulder's sticking up like that. Snap out of it. But if I'm like this, hey, I'm healed. See, your symptoms are gone. So, in a soul issue, since you can't see it, the Holy Spirit has to allow something negative to happen to bring it out of you. So that way the person knows, ooh, there's something still in there. But he was doing that, but you were taking it wrong. You were taking it wrong like the devil was telling you, you're frustrated, aren't you? You're never going to get healed, are you? Are they all gone? Are they outside? Are they inside? And then there's this confusion that starts to float through the person's mind about them being delivered. But actually it's simple. You know, it's like whittling. We let down, and then now we're down to here now. When he first started coming here, we were up there. Now we're down to here, and we've only got a little bit more to go. And all you have to do is be patient and understand that we got him. So you don't get frustrated anymore. Then we can kill him. You with me? I love you. Absolutely. <laughs> That's all it is. Patient, whittling it down. You, did anything bad happen to you after he died? Hmm? Did anything bad happen to you after he died? Uh, no, I was just frustrated that I tried to get through to him. I tried to talk to him about this. I, and he just wouldn't. Did you repent of that yet? I, I, I spent... Uh, it's been a lot of time ministering to my nephew. Did you repent of that yet? Yes. Yeah. Now, here's the deal. And you're, when you do evangelistic work, Jesus said, you go to this house. They tell you to get lost. 
You don't take it personal. You go to the next house. You tried to get your brother saved. You did your best. And he wasn't listening. And it wasn't your fault. It's not your fault. What I'm feeling right now is I got one brother left. And you're feeling fear over him. And nephews. And he's going to go the same way. You're fearing that. Yeah. Okay. I'm asking God, what, what am I supposed to do? And what I'm, okay. He's answering your prayer right now. You are to repent. What What did you say? What I'm hearing him say is just like, just like with my daughter. It's like, well, God wants me to fix me first. Well, that's correct. But the fact you've got fear, that's going to hurt us. That's going to help him go to hell. The same thing. Before. You're yeah, afraid. Just, just started college and is not communicating with me. And you, do you have fear over that? Yeah. That's a soul issue. And that fear is going to block your prayers and delay. Also taking on the responsibility. I'm supposed to be the fixer. No, you're you're blaming yourself. Probably because you're supposed to be the dad and fix all this stuff and you're the Christian and you're supposed This is all you carrying around self-imposed burdens. God's not putting these burdens on you He's not doing it You're doing it yourself And the reason the devil wants you to do it is because That'll block your prayers and so your other brother will go to hell and then your daughter's gonna go I say no. And that's giving you fear. Okay? Will you take a, 10 minutes now and repent of this? And remove this fear of the, their future. It's really the fear of their future. That's what you're afraid of. And that's how the devil's blocking your prayers. And you can't afford to have your prayers blocked. We need them for those people. Will you do it? Will you repent of this this fear of their future right now? Now, thank you. Where's Tracy? Uh, uh, streamers, this is Brother Mike. I'm signing off and uh, go to the website hardcorechristianity.com and hit the post deliverance button, hit the uh, teaching button, and read two articles: How Satan Controls the Mind and Satan's Counterattack. The devil will attack you. You will be hit within 48 hours. Thursday night, 7 o'clock Pacific Time. Friday night, 7 o'clock Pacific Time. Healing, preaching, and deliverance here at the Arizona Deliverance Center. I am out.